Mm, I like that shit. All right. Well, we might as well get started with that. Yep. Let's go. Three, two, one. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferrosi, with my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Morning, morning. Hmm. Good morning. Good morning. I'm drinking some shit coffee this morning. I'm very disappointed in it. Mm. I I, uh, I ran out of the stuff. We have a Keurig at home or a Keurig or whatever the fuck it is. I don't That's know a unique pronunciation. Yeah. Keurig. 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 I, Keurig. 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 I don't know. Like Sirachi. Sirachi. Sriracha? Sriracha? Sriracha. <laughs> Sriracha. Sriracha. Yep. I know barbecue sauce and ketchup. Ketchup. And don't you start. I'm sorry. Uh, but last night, you know, living out in the country, <laughs> the closest fucking store is the Dollar General about eight minutes away. Yeah. And like, you don't really get much at the Dollar General. You get what you get. Propane. <laughs> Propane. That's all I know. That's all I've been there for so far. <laughs> <laughs> Propane and uh, um, coffee stuff. Propane and um, like. House, house essentials, snacks, hey, toilet Shane, paper. Shane, this is really loud. You need to turn this shit down. You two fucking assholes yesterday on your meeting, fucking my settings all up. I think I had to turn the headphones up. Is it down now? Yeah, turn that shit down. Get your shit together. Fuck are you doing? You know I'm the most important person at this company. <laughs> we, we figured you wanted to hear more you. I don't want to hear any more More cowbell. <laughs> Uh, no, the Dollar General is, um, uh, thank you, Shane. So it was the coffee shit or the <laughs> stuff you put in the coffee no, shit? No, I went to, uh, so I like this, uh, I don't even know the name of, I just know how it looks. How much of a boomer statement is that? <laughs> Go to the grocery store. I don't know what it looks. It's the red and white one. You know, the one with the donut thing on it and it says dark. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I think it's the donut shop dark. Yeah. So we, we, since Hannah's been pregnant, she doesn't drink a lot of coffee. She has a cup here and there. Um, but you know, you're not supposed to have a bunch of coffee and she's a huge coffee drinker. Mm -hmm. So we bought the brand new fucking coffee machine. Then she gets pregnant, fucks it all up. So then I got to remove that. Cause what am I going to make a pot of coffee? Yeah. For? You waste it. So we got this coup rig or cur egg or cure cure egg, cure egg. I think that's right. Fuck off. I'm going to say what I want. Okay. So anyway, I went and bought like 20 different flavors and then I found the one I liked and then la I ran out of it. And then I went to the dollar store and like, they didn't have anything that I really wanted. Because they I like strong coffee. So I bought Fol were they Folgers? I should have bought the Folgers. I bought the Starbucks, French roast. Oh no. It's not good. Bro, I do not like Starbucks coffee. I don't like it. Mm -mm. No. I'm excited because we got the meeting with the coffee guy today. This is gonna be great. I did move it back. Oh, you did? I moved it back. I think we're gonna do tomorrow. Wonderful. Just because I didn't know what was going on with my, all my house shit this morning. That's perfect. I'm yep. ready. That'll be exciting. Yeah. Real good coffee. Just want my own. We get to roast it. Figure out all the. I'm. I love it all. I'm so pumped. I just want to. I want everyone to know what I'm like. I want them to drink what we're drinking because it is that fucking good. Listen, we are some critical, judgmental fucks when it comes to food and drinks and everything. Yep. And it's not a bad thing. I like to, I like, I'm a foodie. Mm -hmm. Pe so people, a couple of people ask me like, why am I so willing to spend money? Or, I mean, most people get it. Most bodybuilders get it, but they're like, man, like big time steakhouses, they're really expensive. Fucking <laughs> ton of, ton of high end bourbon and scotch yeah. behind me. Yep. Like what's the gig? And I'm like, okay, so this is what I can equate it to. I grew up in a family of food. We eat. We all got the fat person gene, and we love good food. My mom is a stupid, phenomenal cook. That bitch can cook. Like, there's not one thing that my mom makes that's bad. Like, She can whip something up in minutes. Minutes. Yep. And not only that, like, everybody likes it. Even my kids, like, anything that she cooks. If I say we're going to Granny's for Sunday dinner, they're like, yeah. And, like, if I say we're cooking, I'm cooking dinner tonight, they're like, what is it? Yeah. I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> you little <laughs> shit. But they go to Granny's and they're all ready. Like, she makes just, you name it, she makes it. Best lasagna I've ever eaten in my life. Hands down. Like, people that say, like, an Ital I, don't eat a, I don't eat Italian at other restaurants because I know it's not as good as my mom's. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's pretty fucking bad. Like, there's a couple fire Italian joints around Pittsburgh. I won't go... Because they ain't my mom's cooking. Yeah. My mom cooks way better. I hate to fucking tell you, but your lasagna ain't hers. Hers fucks. Man, I never even consider going Italian when I'm going out to dinner. No, no. Cause, uh, and we're also fat guys. Yeah. So, like, we'll get, you, eat, you eat too much Italian, you're going to get fat as fuck. Yeah, and I can eat pasta, like, 
<sighs> never ending. Get down. Yep. You know, so I like all of familia in Pittsburgh. I really want to go, but I'm terrified because and again, it's a fucking expensive dinner. Yeah. But my mom's is fucking free. I can go kick your lasagna's <laughs> ass for no money. And I'm like, I'd hate because then people ask me about it. And I hate to be like, that's not as good as my mom's. Yeah. I want to say that because mm. my mom gets down with food. She so does. We're big time foodies. I and then uh, in bodybuilding, bland. Yeah. Chicken, rice, eggs, potatoes, steak, bland, bland ground meat, like nothing crazy. And whenever I was broke, I didn't even have enough money to buy good meat. So I was eating shit meat with nothing on it for years. And I'd be so excited for a cheat meal. And I'd be so excited to try new foods. And then I did so much fucking cardio. Hours a day. An hour in the morning. Train in the afternoon. An hour in the evening. That was my routine, prepping for a show. So in my little house that I used to live in, I had like a cardio hallway. Small little hallway, you know it. I've, I've done cardio in there. Yeah, in the hallway. Yep. It's like fucking four foot wide, or like eight foot long, and then I put a TV right in front of my stepper. Yep, boxes okay. the heat in there. Yep, and I'm steamy. in Oh, yeah. So then I put a TV there, like a little 26-inch TV, right in front of me. Like it legitimately was like a foot away from my face. Yeah. And I had cable to it and everything. I paid the extra because I just watched the Travel Channel and Food Network. Oh, I watched, and this is back in like 09, 08, 09, 2010, 2011, 2012. So for about five years, I dieted, four years, I dieted super hard all the time because I was fat. And for me to get in shape, ton of cardio, chicken, a little bit of rice, a lot of veggies. And then for six weeks, fish, every fucking meal, fat ass. Oof. One red meat meal a day, eight ounces of sweet potato once a day. It's about it. You're smelling good. <laughs> it was horrible. And I can still smell myself. Uh -huh. So anyway, like that's whenever I fell in love with food. And that's why I know so much about steakhouses. So you'd watch the Food Network Bro, and shit? And, oh, my God. Wouldn't that fuck with you even more? Oh, like, not yeah. Eating? Oh, yeah. I developed mental problems. Yeah. Like I was like, oh. like I, I became emotional about food. Yeah. Because <laughs> I loved it so much and I couldn't eat it. But I wanted to fucking win in bodybuilding and I like it. And I, it was just, <clears throat> I don't know. I just ha grew an affinity for it. And then I watched back in the day the Travel Channel when it was a big deal for all the little kids out there, <laughs> the youngsters. It was like they always had like the 20 best steakhouses in, in the country, the 50 best steakhouses in the country. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's how I found out about Peter Luger's. <coughs> Hot damn. That's how I found about Peter Luger's. That's how I found about all these steakhouses all over the country. And I was like, I want to try them. And then whenever I started making a little bit of money, I started saving money and putting it aside so I could go to steakhouses in Pittsburgh. And then whenever I'd go somewhere and travel, I'd have those steakhouses. It, I just like it. That's it. I just turned it into a hobby. Yeah. I absolutely fucking love it. Yeah, some people are not. It's just not their thing. No. The so, whole foodie thing is just not like. No. So, but then that's where I come in. Like, that is such a big part of my life that I like good coffee. Yeah. I know the difference between good coffee and shit coffee. I know the difference between good bourbon and shit bourbon. I know the difference between a good scotch and a bad scotch. Like, I'm my palate's pretty sophisticated at this point just because of experience of trying. Do I know exactly what I'm doing? No. I'm just learning along the way. Now, whenever I meet somebody that's really experienced in it, I'm going to be completely absorbed and be like, tell me more. Let's yeah. go. Let's turn this into a fucking seven-day bender, you know? <laughs> and uh, being in this position is just nice. So I figured that's the great part about telling everybody about yeah. snacks and everybody's palate's different. You know, some people might like a scotch that I absolutely hate. And there could be a crazy $1,000 bottle back there that I think's great and you think sucks. Yeah. Or vice versa. You know what I mean? I'll make fun of you and tell you you're wrong. <laughs> but that's part of the fun of it. Yeah. Same thing with you and weed. Oh, yeah. You can fucking take a puff and taste it. Like, yeah. Uh, no, I'm good. Have gonna, this back. I'd rather not smoke at all. No, I'm not going to smoke at all. I know yep. this is going to make me feel like shit. Yep. I actually did my coffee different this morning, too. I actually use like a flavored creamer. 
Oh, really? And I never do, but I was intrigued by the new one Kim got. What what flavor did she buy? It was like French toast. Oh. Never saw it before. Is it coffee made or that uh, uh, d- international delight? International delight. Uh-huh. I'm like, uh, and I already made mine the way I like it. I was a little skimped on the sugar, so I'm like, all right, it's not going to be too overpowering. A little dab? I tell you what, man. You liked it. Yeah, and I didn't think I was going to at all. It was pretty fucking good. Mm. Yep. I don't mind the flavors. Not every day. Not every day. I just yeah. I like to taste the coffee, just like I like to taste the bourbon, just like I like to taste the meat. Yep. I don't like adding anything to my steak. Salt, pepper, I'm good. Maybe mm-hmm. like the butter, some truffle oil, whatever it is. But I don't want uh, I don't want the overpowering like fucking blue cheese and fucking lobster. Holland, no, hollandaise. No, or, uh, don't you do that to that what's, steak? Yeah. What's the other one? Bernays sauce. Yeah, Bernays. Yeah. yeah. Mm-mm. None of that. That's that's just like that's for hiding a bad steak. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like, don't yeah. you put fucking a one on that steak? That no that's a sin. Yeah, at a high end steakhouse, that's a sin. Please don't do that. If you ask them for it, they they'll give you the look it's and like, then they'll bring it to you anyway. Like, God, son of a bitch! Or you'll get. We don't have a one here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. <sighs> nope. But uh, that's why I have this affinity for food. And drink because I grew up in the household full of food. I stopped eating for bodybuilding and I loved it. But now I treat these meals and things like this as a reward. Yeah. I work all week long, stay clean on my diet, relatively clean. Lately, not so much just because Hannah likes snacks. It's all her. I'm going to blame her for everything right now. Blame her for my fatness and all that. You're in denial. I know. I'm just saying that so I can. You look it. bigger though. There is a plus. Just run with it. There is. I like it. I'm stronger. (laughs) That's for fucking sure. Um, But that's why. And and I don't know. We've always enjoyed it. Food brings people together. Good food and a good, good atmosphere brings people together. You know, and that's something that there's something to be said about that. Because I think that it's very important that we sit down as a family every night and eat dinner. Like whenever the girls and I all sit down together. Like, that's our time to talk. That's our time to discuss the day. That's our time to enjoy the food. That's our time together. And that's an important tradition that I hold pretty tight because I know not everybody gets to do that. Yeah. Like, some people have such crazy, hectic schedules, and parents work opposite schedules that they don't get to have that, and then it's like that gets a little lost. That time together gets a little lost. So I hold that pretty pretty tight. And, you know, um, I will say this. So my mom uh, at the church, at her church, they do, uh, she handles, she goes to all the funerals and speaks. She'll do like the readings and things like that because sometimes, you know, the family, if the family can't do it or doesn't want to, my mom goes in and does it. And um, so she's been to like fucking over 100 funerals. I mean, kind of fucked up, but she's like, this is what I do and what I can do for the church and do for people. And she remembers that uh, this one people, there was someone that commented like on the, uh, and it was in the obituaries or something like that. And uh, it said, I'm paraphrasing because I can't fully remember it at this moment, but it was along the lines of saying that this woman made really good sauce. Okay. Like she made really good spaghetti sauce. Yeah. The, like the woman that the woman that away. died, yeah. yeah. The woman that died made really good sauce. Yeah, and my mom was like tickled pink by this. But then the priest was just like he was kind of having fun because he knew the family, and he's like, I find it hard to believe that like you guys can't think of anything better than she made really good sauce. <laughs> And, you know, it was a joke and everybody kind of laughed because she was a super person, super nice, typical, typical, like loving grandmother. Yeah. Okay. And my mom like laughed and everything, but then she kind of took, not offense, but she was like, I know what that means. It wasn't, it doesn't mean that she made good sauce. What my mom took it as, and she came home and told us is that she took it as that grandmother was the glue of the family. She's the one that made the food. She's the one that brought people together. That sauce wasn't just sauce. That sauce was love. That sauce was Sunday. That sauce was fucking 30 people over on Sunday for dinner that had all the fucking siblings, all the grandkids, all the people together to have that sauce. Yeah. 
it wasn't just sauce. It was love. It was togetherness. And she was like, that's what that is. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, you're right, dude. That was some heavy shit because that's my mom. My mom makes really good sauce. Yeah. My mom makes good food. Without my mom, there ain't nobody else in the family that cooks like her, that brings a family together like her. So that is like, I, I, I think about that whenever I eat food and where I go somewhere and I have a really good experience because you and I and even Shana over here, whenever we went to Steak 48 together, it wasn't just the food. Yeah. It was the experience. That person's craft and that person's vision for that restaurant came full circle for four people sitting at a table and having a great time. We talked, we had memories, we shared personal things. It was a great sit down. It wasn't just the food. So that plays a huge role in the experience of it. And that's why I hold food so high. Again, same thing like Dean. Dean Arino sent us uh, some Long Branch here. Yeah. Been, one, been talking about it. We, 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 everybody, you can all see, uh, for people that can't see and just listen, we have a, I mean, how many bottles do you think are back there? Like 30, 35? 20. I mean, 20 per row. Okay, so like 40 bottles. Like 40 bottles. So we have there. like about 40 bottles of scotch and bourbon, uh, Irish whiskey, you name it, and we have some pretty high-end bottles back there. Uh, and we enjoy everything. We find the good in every single one. Not every single. Oh, there's one or two that really don't fuck. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll be able to easily tell which ones those are. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Dean, we, we learned about Long Branch, and Long Branch is Matthew McConaughey's uh, whiskey. That's the one with his signature on it. It's from Wild Turkey. He's a Wild Turkey guy. I mean, that dude could sell me anything. Oh, yeah. That dude, if he started smoking Marlboro Reds again, I'd go buy Marlboro Reds. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to buy a fucking Lincoln soon because of him. <laughs> he looks so good in that vehicle. Oh, just his I, shit. I, I just want to be him whenever he's ice fishing by himself. I'm like, maybe I should go buy an aviator and I should like drive to somewhere and just ice fish by myself. And like, I just want to read something like him. Like, I want to read, like tell someone a story like he does. There's a rookie numbers. You're going to pump those up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys, you guys picked to marry him in that in that marry fuck kill question. Oh yeah. So yeah. you got. He, he, I'm spending my life with him. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so, but uh, Dean, uh, the leader, the lead, leader of the demo crew, Dean Perone, super guy. Everybody should go follow Dean. He is an absolute riot. Um, he has what? There's five other girls in his family. No one has any balls he, except him. Yeah, he lives with all females. All females, four girls, and he's married. And uh, he's just super dad, dude. He's everywhere. And, uh, t you know, we've been friends with him for like four years now. He, he is like Superman. The dude can eat any snack and I, not get fat. I don't know what he does. I think he's lying. I think he, I don't think, there's no way. No, he's not lying. He's eating all that shit. I mean, that motherfucker can eat. When he comes in, he throws down. So I'm like, I don't know if he's just making it for his kids and like not eating it or whatever. But anyway, he, I mean, he's, he is an ambassador for so many people in the industry. Yeah. And all pretty good companies. You know that's the really cool thing that I that I uh, uh, that I like about Dean because the companies that he works with, bro, well, I like them too. Yeah, like nobody there that's really a shit bag or anything like that. So there's something to be said for that as well. But he just, he sent us up a bottle of Long Branch, and we're not wild turkey guys. No, I tell you what, I might be a wild turkey guy. Yeah, that Long Branch is one of the best bourbons that I've had. For in a while, yeah. Like I wasn't expecting it. Really good, easy drinking. You can taste the oak. Solid bourbon. I'm a bourbon guy. You are a bourbon guy. I love that Long Branch. Yep, I like it a lot. I mean, it is kind of what? What time is it? Like eight a.m., nine a.m., ten? Is it uh, ten thirty? Uh, it's practically noon. I mean, we could take a whack of it. I wouldn't mind taking a little, t just a little, <laughs> little taste. Um, but uh, we got that one in. Really like it. There's also a questionable bottle of rum up there that just appeared. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it either. I'm not a rum guy. I mean, it is it is a good rum, but I'm not a rum guy. Like, yeah. like I mean, it's good. It's really, it's a great rum. I mean, the only reason I like it was because it was in some bourbon casks. That's, yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah. No. Not rum guy. I like, I mean, I, I personally, in the summertime, I do enjoy vodka. I do like vodka on the rocks with a little lemon. Yeah. That's good. But I like bourbon and scotch. I'm a scotch guy. 
Got a bottle of Weller. Oh, yeah. Um, down in Texas. Yeah. We brought that home. You yeah. can't get that shit up here. No. No. So uh, for everybody that can't see or is listening, um, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. We should just put it on Instagram. We should yeah. just, I'm just going to videotape it. Videotape it. There I go again, Jesus. you fucking boomer. I'm going to record and put it on the internet. Yeah, we'll make a video, put it on, on the internet. Yeah, so everybody can see what we have. But it is quite the collection. I'm impressed with ourselves. We did a good job. Did a good, great job. Great job, Bob. Yep. There's a lot. Uh, we, I want to do a, a number of things to like step my game up so that when people come in, they want to try anything. Because there's one thing. I really enjoy it. I fucking love it. But nothing makes me happier than somebody that wants to try something coming over and saying, oh, I've been wanting to try that. And then it's there, and then they get to try it. I get to see their reaction. I get to see how they take it in, the whole nine. Like, that's exciting. I like explaining what they don't understand their taste deck. Yeah. They're like, what is that? And then, like, I'm like, oh, it's this. Yeah, whether it be the dried fruit in there or a different type of wood or coming from a different cask. I love all that shit. Yeah. How the finish is different than the, than the, than the smell. Like, on the nose, it could smell like, you know, dried fruit, and you could get some smoke. But then when you taste it, the smoke's way lighter, and then you end up getting a little bit of dried fruit, and then the finish is crazy long and, like, oily. Yeah. Wow, how it coats your mouth. And then one will just be, the finish will be crazy abrupt, like a dry finish. I love it. Never knew. It's all kind of good. We got schooled on drops of water yeah. in scotch, too. Yep. We were in Texas. Mm -hmm. I don't like ice in my shit, though. No. I don't like ice in my bourbon, and I don't like ice in my scotch. The only thing that I do like ice in is an old fashioned. Yeah. Or Jack and Diet. Or you just like Jack yeah. and Diet, no ice. No. <laughs> oh. That's what I felt like I had at fucking Monterey Bay Fish, Fish Grotto. Man, that place. Oh, bro. I'm, on your shit list. I. Okay. I'm just being a prick because the people listening want to know where they're going to go spend their money somewhere. Yeah. Don't spend your money at that fucking place, don't give them anything. I, I mean, it's the same thing with us creating what we do. Like, don't spend fucking shit on that. Like, why would we create good stuff? Why do we do what we do? Because it's worth it. Yeah. Because I'm just some podunk, dumb motherfucker from Western PA that had a dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just relentless with work, same as you. So if you ever got in this position, what are you going to do? Cool shit? Yep. I'm going to fuck. I'm going to get down. <laughs> I ain't going to fucking be some piece of shit fucking low life that fucking cuts corners and does everything all the bullshit i ain't gonna be that i'm gonna be one bad motherfucker tell you what that's just how i that's that's like uh i was my mom i was talking to her yesterday about how emmy is like dead set on winning yeah Com crazy competitive crazy same with adeline crazy competitive and i was talking to my mom yesterday and i was telling her how they got more meats and she says to me she's like i wonder where they got that from and I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, my God. She's like, do you not remember? Like, you would work yourself up so much that you would have to be fucking perfect with everything. And I'm like, yeah, I do remember that. She's like, you would get so worked up, you'd vomit. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I do remember that. Like, on test days at school. Oh, yeah, test days at school, fucking horrible. I'd turn white and vomit when I opened the car door to go to school. We're like the same person, dude. So, like. That was me growing up. A horrible. My mom said it was fucking horrible. She's like, you were the worst kid I had that was a good kid. <laughs> like, you didn't cause trouble. You were just such a fucking, like, like, obsessive person about doing well. I was like, God, oh, it makes sense, you know. And, I, and I'm like, I would never want to deal with that shit because I was a head case. Fucking head case. I mean, for God's sakes, they thought something was wrong with me. Yeah. Thought I had like a social disorder or some type of problem or some type of social anxiety. Just turns out I just wanted to fucking win and do well. <laughs> just didn't know how to channel my energy. And, uh, and I think that's why with bodybuilding, it took me to another level. You know, oh, we should just do, we'll do story time today with some bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So, and that, that is how, once I found out like that's who I was competitive and i wanted to win i just and personally it was personal it was all personal it wasn't like for for fame and fortune i wanted to do i wanted to be a pro bodybuilder whenever i found that out i just was like i don't give a fuck what it takes i'll do anything i will do anything you will not beat me and i just wanted to be a pro that was the bar that i set for myself i said i wanted to be a pro bodybuilder 
bar I set for myself. I don't give a fuck what it takes. I'm going to figure everything out. I'm going to be meticulous. I'm going to find out what works about training, nutrition, steroids, supplements, you name it. I'm going to find out about it. And then I went to work. And this isn't like a fucking five-week course on how do I get big. It was the love of it. I fucking loved it because it was hard. There were so few bodybuilders that I wanted to be one of them. And then I was like, yeah, it'd be nice to be famous, but I just want to fucking win. I want to be on stage and I want to feel it. And that's whenever Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, fucking end of Nasser's career, Sean Ray, Chris Cormier, Flex Wheeler was just finishing up whenever I was getting into it. So I was fucking obsessed and I knew everything about bodybuilding and I wanted to be one of them. And I was willing to do anything, anything. The sacrifice to do it was there. Like... I don't care what the fuck it takes. Seth, do you know you're going to have to take steroids? Yep. Do you know what steroids do to you? Yep. Tell me what they do to you. And then I tell them because I read every fucking, everything that I could get my hands on. Back then, there was no internet. When I was 18, 17, 18 years old, no internet. So I just read everything. Every book, everything, and then talked to a ton of people. And then I said, I, ha I just have to do it. I just have to do the experiment. Right. So everything. That's why I tell everybody, document your shit. And that's why I am a notebook guy. I have fucking, I had tons of notebooks. Legitimately probably around 150 notebooks filled with fucking information about training, nutrition, supplementation, steroids, you name it, everything. Not only did I take notes about, like, I just took notes like a science class. Hey, what's testosterone and anthate? I'd read testosterone and anthate where it originated, what it is, what it's supposed to do to you, all the fucking pros and all the fucking cons, all the side effects, and wrote it in a notebook for every steroid on the fucking, in the book. The book that I read was uh, Anabolics 2002 by William Lelowen. It was a book I read. Yeah. I read that book front to back a hundred times. Yeah. The other book that I always studied was... The Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding by Arnold Schwarzenegger. That was where I got all my training information mm -hmm. and some of the nutrition out of there. So I was like, oh, okay. So I just continued to construct my own thing. I just got this question on my DMs. Oh, really? Asking, because everyone's saying there's just such shit information on the internet and on these forums. Garbage. They were asking for actual books, literature, because they're like, there's no way. I'm pretty this is sure on there. William Lelowin has continued to write books after this yeah so think of this now this is just fucking basic steroids today's there's all these serms and sarms and fucking uh peptides. peptides listen motherfuckers i don't care what anybody says it's all trash just take fucking steroids and shut the fuck up work your balls off yep that's really all it is everybody wants to know why i'm uh, uh, like i'll get into it i'm gonna get all fired up here so anyway you have to have this fucking blueprint you have to do the work yourself you can't rely on anybody else to do the fucking work. I wanted to be the best. I did. I quickly realized I'm not Jay fucking Cutler. But Jay Cutler started somewhere. Where'd Jay start? Same fucking place as me. Where'd Flex, Lewis, Flex Wheeler start? Where'd Kevin Lavroni start? Where'd everybody start? Same motherfucking place. Right at the start line. You have to start lifting weights. There's no quick fucking fix. You ain't going to get it. So I just said, I'm going to have to figure out all these different things. So I did. So I figured out nutrition. I was figuring out steroids, supplementation, training, what worked, what didn't work. Did the work. Okay. Then I realized that I had to start taking steroids. I was like, okay, so now I know a whole lot about them. Here comes the real shit. Now I'm going to have to jump, jam a fucking needle into my body and go with it. There ain't no turning back after this, Seth. There ain't no turning back. How bad do you fucking want it? Mm -hmm. I want it really fucking bad. What exactly do you want? I want to be a professional athlete, and I want to be in the big time. There was a bunch of people that told me don't get into bodybuilding cause, for the money because there is no money. I'm like, fuck you. I see Jay Cutler. He makes money one guy you know what i mean i yeah. was into it i just wanted it i just wanted to be a pro that was the dream i had i didn't know what i was going to do with it afterwards no fucking clue so whenever i decided to take the shit that's whenever i was like okay here it goes 
You're going to fuck your life up. You're going to fuck your balls up. You're going to fuck everything up. Your whole chemical, the chemical makeup of your body is going to change. And you're not just going to take one steroid. You're going to take a lot. You're going to take every single one in that notebook. You have to. Why do I have to? Because it's an experiment. It's not going to be, I'm going to take every single one at the same time. Nope. I'm going to take this for this time. I'm going to mix in this like I read. And then I'm going to take just this one. I'm going to take just this one. I'm going to take just this one. So I know what each does individually and what happens whenever they stack them. This was not a fucking one month, six month, one year, two year experiment. This was fucking lifetime. I wanted to dedicate my life. I was willing to sacrifice everything because it was my dream. And anybody with a dream that wants to be great... Motherfucker, you're going to sacrifice. You're going to sacrifice anything and everything. Is that selfish? Yes. I tell you what, I can look back at my life and say, I can't say what it could have should have. I fucking did it. So I did them all. What was, your fir- what was the f- first thing you, you tried or dabbled in? So this was before Raw Deal. Raw Deal was whenever they shut down all the real labs in America. Okay. Okay. And stopped all the incoming steroids. Raw Deal was a fucking huge deal where a couple big time pro bodybuilders got fucking, got fucking caught. But they were bringing in a ton of steroids everywhere and they just shut everything down in one day. Yeah. Big fucking deal. So anyway, that, I started before that. I took Super Test 250. Uh, I took T400. Um, which was test 400. I think it was, oh man, that was, it was a nightmare. It wasn't a good, it was not a good idea to yeah. take your first time. Uh, <laughs> then I took some, I took, uh, some DECA from, oh, oh, where's it from? It was right on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember the lab. I'll remember it. I'll remember it. Yeah. Uh, but I took DECA and then I took, um, some D-ball. So I took, uh, T4, I took half a CC of T400 one cc of test of super test 250 and then one cc of deca so it was i took 450 milligrams of testosterone a week 200 milligrams of deca and then i took uh, 20 megs of d-ball a day i started whenever i was 177 pounds yeah i finished at uh like 196 197 mm. gained 20 fucking pounds in 12 weeks fuck oh yeah it was a big deal yeah that fucking t400 turned me into a fucking knot yeah. I shot it into my ass cheek, and my ass cheek was legitimately four times the fucking size it was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> fucking huge butt cheek. I was like, oh. you know, I'm 20 years old, fucking not knowing what the fuck I'm doing this because is, this is how it should be. This is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Oh my God, people do this. This is crazy. So, uh, yeah, that was the first thing, I, first time I did anything. And again, I started and I was just a young, dumb kid, didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but I knew a lot about it. And I was a hard fucking worker. I wanted it. Yeah. So I was training for six years before that, seven years. Started yeah. lifting weights when I was fucking 13, 14 years old. Started training really hard whenever I was like 15, 16. And then started taking shit when I was 20. So from the time I was 20 until 24, I fucking took gear, ate food, and trained my motherfucking balls off. I turned pro on my 25th birthday. So for four fucking years... I was running fucking gear hard. I'd get off here and there. I'd clean myself out, but I was fucking running because I wanted it. What was I sacrificing? Everything. Everything. Bro, it was insane. So what was your what was your pro turning uh, protocol look like then? Okay, so the most, so, okay. Yeah, what's, the, what's the? Oh, man. All right. <laughs> There's one time during it when I was in prep for a show. All right, I turned pro. Uh, I turned pro in 2009, and my pro my pro cycle was nothing crazy. I responded really well. Yeah, I responded really well to gear, and I was a light heavyweight, so I had to make 197 and a half. I think it was 197 and a half. Oh, I can't. 190, 198 and a quarter. That's what it is. So I had to make 198. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have to be massive, but I had to be, you know, in shape, shredded, and I was fat. So, and, and you're going to bodybuilding show. Listen, everybody, uh, this is the next thing. Bodybuilding, pro bodybuilding is not fucking healthy. It's not. Anybody that says fucking, what about my health and bodybuilding? Suck my dick. Fuck off. 
health. Health. We're talking about health and bodybuilding. It's a fucking freak show, dude. Fuck your health. Fuck everything. I just want to win. Fuck off. What's wrong with that? Oh, you're a fucking head case. You're all fucked up. Yes, I am. Who the fuck are you? What are you doing? You having fun sitting there jerking off the fitness models by yourself? Hmm? I could say anything to you. Oh, you go 200 miles an hour on a fucking bike? Fuck you. That's stupid. Oh, you want to go shark diving? Fuck you. That's stupid. You skydive? What the fuck is that? No, stop criticizing and just accept it for what it is. And it's fine. Bodybuilding's not healthy. Anybody that says it is, full of shit. How do I know that? Well, bud, because after you're done your fucking post-show everything, your show's done, and you go get your blood work done, your blood work is not getting two thumbs up. Yeah. Okay? But your bank account and everything associated does have two thumbs up if you did well. So there's your give and your take, bud. What do you want to do with your life? Don't criticize me, just do it. But bodybuilding isn't healthy, so let's get that right out of the fucking way. I eat healthy food, but I'm also taking a bunch of shit. So um, uh, getting ready for nationals, I was taking uh, I was taking 600 milligrams of testosterone a week, 100 megs of prop a day, six days. Um, I was taking 300 megs of Tren, 300 megs of Masteron, three IUs of growth hormone a day, um, 30 megs of Anivar, 25 megs of Proviron, 50 megs of Winstrel, not 25 megs of Winstrel, 50 the last two weeks, 40 megs of Novadex, and a half a meg of Arimidex. And I would cycle Clenbuterol two days on, two days off, that was at like like 80 to 100 micrograms a day, two days on, two days off. On the two days off, nothing. Fat burner. I take a fat burner. Mm-hmm. That was it. People are probably like, oh, that's it? That's it? <laughs> that's it? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot, but in all reality, it's not a ton. In reality, that's not a lot of testosterone. Fuck no, I've tripled that before. <laughs> <laughs> So that, but that was that's how I turned pro, and then that's a similar cycle that I did getting ready for my pro debut a year later, because it worked, and I had to make two o two. Okay, I was fucking shredded to the bone, bro. I was fucking peeled for nationals. I fucking because the amount of work that I put in. Let's say this: the amount of work that I put in, in comparison to that cycle, was nothing. The amount of work was astronomical. Yeah. It was unfucking real. I look back upon it and I say, holy fuck. Bro, Hani just pushed me to fucking death. He's like, bro, you got to get fucking peeled. Bro, my lower back was crazy looking. Looked like saran wrap was on my shit. That's what my skin looked like. I did an hour of cardio in the morning. Trained in the afternoon and an hour of cardio in the evening. Stepper in the morning, trained in the afternoon, and then I did walked on a treadmill for an hour in the evening. 45 minutes to an hour, all depending on send pictures, and he'd do it. Tell me what to do. Bro, it was fucking wild. Then I did that again. I couldn't get out of shape. Can't get over 230, 235 in the off season because then it's going to be too hard to make 202. Yeah. Went and did that, did 202. And then similar, but this time I put on too much muscle. So this time I had to add T3 into it. So I had to take Cytomil, which is uh, thyroid, and start eating muscle away because at like 210, I was fucking peeled. He's like, okay, it's going to get ugly. I'm like, what do you mean ugly? It's already been ugly. It's been fucking horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, it got fucking intense. So you had to peel muscle off. Oh, bro. Weight. I was eating eight ounces of fish. With asparagus, every fucking meal, one carb meal a day, like four ounces of red meat, four ounces of fish, a little bit of sweet potato. Had to peel it off. Yeah. And then what ends up happening is, is like with T3, you en- it ends up turning into a fucking snowball effect. Like once my fucking, once, I, we st- once the carb up process started and I dropped my water, bro, weight just started coming off. Bro, I ate so much food for that carb up, it was scary. 
Like, what are we talking? I like, probably ate 10 pounds of potatoes in a day and a half. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. We couldn't fill me back up. It was it was just getting out of control. And he had me eating a ton. And, like, I, I was full. I was filling up. But, bro, it was just wild. It was a wild experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is just, this is just, the, this is just the fucking rainbows and blowjobs of the prep, too. Yeah. All right. Fucked up story time. All right. All right. So. <laughs> Here we go. You have, this is the part that like people like to pretend doesn't exist, but then people ask me how I was so fucking good. Bro, I was willing to go to the end. I was willing to go anywhere and not let you beat me. I was willing to go further than anybody. I didn't give a fuck. I wanted it that bad. Bro, at this time, I didn't have a lot of money either. It was all mailbox money. It was me trying to make it in bodybuilding. I had to fucking win. If I didn't win, I wouldn't have the sponsorships. I wouldn't have the money. I wouldn't have the shit. So, I remember doing cardio, and bro, I had to peel fucking muscle off. I had to do it. I was doing cardio, sweatshirt, sweatpants, thick socks, shoes, tossel cap, hood up. 45 minutes to an hour on a stepper. I remember the one time, numerous times, I remember the first time that like, I'm fucking doing cardio, and I'm like next to death, dude. I'm two weeks out, and I'm fucking like, like stepping, like legitimately almost sleeping on the fucking stepper just because I have nothing left. Yeah. And I got to keep going. I'm at like 31 minutes. And I just keep going. And then once it dings, I'd fucking just fall back and lay on the ground. I just lay there. And like, I remember fucking just, I remember like blacking out. Yeah. Laying there. Nightmare. F sugar's dropping, shaking. I'm like, hey, dude. I told Adeline, go get me an apple. So I bit the apple chewed it up, and then spit it out. I bit the apple, chewed it up, and then spit it out. I didn't want to eat it. I just wanted that little bit of sugar to bring me back to life because I was fucking going out. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. I was, and I was like, okay. And then after that, I'd freak out, and I'd be like, okay. So I'd get hydrated. I'd drink as much fluids as I can, get back into it. And then I'd, like, stare at myself in the mirror and make sure I still look good, like, wait for it to happen. It was fucking nuts. Man. Fucking head case. Yeah. So then, now the hairy part comes in where you got to take your gear. All right? I'm 200, 200 pounds, 210 mm -hmm. pounds, shredded. I'm vascular as fuck. Yeah. I got to stick needles all through my body all week. Everybody knows whenever you hit yourself with needles, you're going to build up scar tissue. So I was like, okay, today's this day. So I had to take Prope, Tren, Mastron, almost every day. Some concoction. I remember hitting my shoulders. If I hit one side, I'd have to hit the other because there's my obsessive compulsor, yeah. com compulsiveness coming in where I had to be symmetrical, everything. And some stuff does localize to a certain degree. Whenever you do take trend, it does inflame a little bit and gives you a rounder look. So if I hit my left shoulder, I want to hit my right one too. If I hit my left rear delt, I'm gonna hit my right rear delt too. If I hit my left lat, I'm hitting my right lat too. Yes, that's just how my head worked and that's what I did. But and that's where scar tissue buildup comes. And if you're taking things that are fast acting, you have to take them often. There is fast acting and slower acting. Okay, that depends on the ester and how, how long acting it is. So whenever you're prepping for a show, you want all the faster acting things to take over because then it's, it's easier to regulate. Okay, like if you take a long acting ester, you're going to have a buildup and then it's going to be a slow come down. Okay, over like a seven to 10 day period. But if you take like a faster acting, you're going to be able to control it because you're going to take the blood levels are going to go up and then come back down. And if you take them at the same time every day on a regular basis in that order, you're going to stay pretty consistent. Therefore, now you are regulated. So at six to seven weeks out, that's whenever I turn everything over to a faster acting ester. Therefore, I can stay more regulated. So that means you got to take shit every day. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Or take shit every other day. So I remember... Anybody that's ever taken trenbolin acetate knows about the trend cough. Whenever you take tren, really good tren, <laughs> it's terrible to say that. <laughs> Whenever you take it, sometimes you'll be able to taste it. Sometime, sometimes you'll actually be able to taste it, and it'll give you a metallic taste in your mouth. And it'll give you a little bit of a cough. It'll make you feel like something's in your chest. And, <laughs> and you can taste it. Hmm. Did you ever get the trend cough? No. You never got the trend cough? Nope. Okay, and then you begin to just cough uncontrollably. Like, 
uncontrollably. And it's not fun. So this one time prepping, I think I was like, I was like four weeks out from my pro debut Yeah, in the bathroom, hit my left shoulder, hit a vein. I pushed it in. It was pushed in, trend, master on, and I could taste it like immediately halfway oh, in. Man. And I'm like, <gasps> I could taste it and I was holding it so I didn't start moving so it just keep going in. Yeah. That fucking needle gets pulled out, fucking blood squirts out of my shoulder and I start coughing uncontrollably for minutes. <gasps> like just fucking I'm on the ground on my knees coughing. I turn purple. Oh, fuck, dude. My shoulder's fucking purple. I hit a vein, nasty hit. I'm 4 weeks out. Yeah. Stressed out, got to win the show. I'm fucking coughing uncontrollably. Water don't help. There ain't nothing that helps Trent cough. Yeah. I'm purple. Purple. Shredded. Purple. Purple. Shoulder. Purple face. Purple shoulder. Fucking coughing uncontrollably. I finish coughing. Get my shit together. Trying to wash my mouth out. Trying to drip. My throat's dry as fuck. What do you think I did next? Hit the other shoulder. Hit the other fucking shoulder. (laughs) Yeah. Fuck, dude. I was like, yep, all right, I'm good, I'm good, you good, everything's cool, let's fucking go, next. Okay. The way my head worked was, I don't care. Whenever I tell people, I I don't, I I will go to the end, I was, I didn't care. I didn't have a choice. I had a choice, but that was my choice. That's how you find out. The only way to find out for 100% is to try it yourself. Do you want to do it? How do you know anything in life unless you try it? There's only a few things you can know for sure. One sucking a dick. I'm pretty good on that. I ain't doing that. (laughs) There's no experimentation needed for me on that. Pretty sure I'm good. But other things like this, like you have to experiment. So that's the crazy side of me. Willing to go, for, uh, I loved it so fucking much. Because it's also, what did I say previously? I love fucking Superman drugs, dude. I fucking love them. I love it the way it makes me look. I love it the way that it makes me feel. I fucking love it. So I had to experiment. And then it's like, okay, now, like, how far are you willing to go to do it all? And I don't care what anybody says. All bodybuilders are fucked up. All powerlifters are fucked up. All strongmen are fucked up. They're not bad people. We just like it. There's nothing wrong with it. We just like it. It's different. It's crazy. Fucking ludicrous. But everybody seems to love it. Yep. Everybody wants to know. I feel like there's also a huge misconception on what it actually takes to be an open class top placing bodybuilder. I mean, it, it's not 500 megs a test, guys. It's not 500 megs a test. It's not six ounces of chicken and two cups of white rice. It's not cardio for 10 minutes. It's not an hour training session one time a week. It is fucking crazy consistent on every single level. One is not there, you won't win. If one of those factors is not there or you didn't dedicate all you had to it, you're going to fucking lose because there's somebody out there willing to go to the fucking end in every single way possible to shove it down your fucking throat. And every person out there that's asking themselves or young kid asking this and ton of people ask me questions, how do I become a pro? Let me tell you, you give it everything. You dedicate every single aspect of your life to it. That means you're going to sacrifice. You're going to sacrifice your time. You're going to sacrifice your mind, your body, your relationships, everything for your dream. Otherwise, get the fuck out of my face. Why was I good at it? Because I was willing to sacrifice it all. That's all you have to do at anything you want to be great at. When it comes to business with me now, I'll sacrifice it all. When it comes to people, Kobe Bryant, 
the dude was one of the greatest basketball players to ever step foot on a basketball court. Do you think that he just went to the gym once a day? Do you think that the guy, the dude dedicated his entire life to it? He sacrificed. I really wonder, in his early days in his career, I wonder, I'd love to know how his relationships were personally with everybody. I bet you it was, Kobe don't give a fuck. Yeah. Kobe's going to play. And everybody knew how good he was in his surrounding circle and said, that's the man. Because they were supporting him. He surrounded himself with the people that didn't fuck with him. And if they did fuck with him, he said, get the fuck out. That's how you become great at something. Mm -hmm. That's how you find out how good you are. There's just work to do. If you want to be great at anything, anything, you have to be willing to sacrifice. All of it. Every aspect of your life can't do that you won't you'll lose doesn't mean you won't be successful or have great things just won't it means that you won't get where you want to go i was willing to do those things and then i had to step away because everything in my opinion was falling apart in my life and i had to change it i didn't like what was going on other factors in my life took over I put other factors in front of my aspirations and said, I can't do this anymore. And then I realized that like bodybuilding wasn't my problem. It was other things in my life. And then I came back Yeah. and I came back with a different angle and a different thought process and a different person because I grew a conscience. Mm -hmm. When you grow a conscience, bodybuilding kind of changes. It's very similar to a football player realizing, I don't think I want to get fucking cracked in the head anymore. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that motherfucker wasn't a crazy like that. Luke, Luke, what's his name, Keekly? Yeah, Luke Keekly. Luke Keekly, crazy good linebacker. Played in the NFL for eight years, nine years, something like that. Is that what it was? Yeah. He just retired. Bro, he's one of the best linebackers ever played that's playing football currently. Yeah. Phenomenal. Just up and quit. Just quit. Why would you quit? You're great at it. Done getting hit. He's done, dude. Yeah. He grew conscience, doesn't want to do it anymore. Whatever it is, I don't know. Yeah. But he personally had a change of heart that said, I have to do something different. Yep. Now, anybody can say anything. Oh, you're making fucking millions. Bro, you're making millions of dollars. Why would you quit? Why would you throw all that away? Didn't, don't I, I mean, didn't we just realize like Kobe Bryant just passed away? Too quick with his daughter. Millions would be spent to bring him back. This guy just realized millions aren't worth it. I want my time for myself. And people criticize him or say they would do differently. Bro, honestly, in my opinion, just go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if we just got done saying all these things about how whenever someone passes early, Nobody wants to see that shit, whether it's Kobe Bryant or your fucking mom or your sister or your brother, your dad, your b- anything. And then when someone quits early in something or has a change of heart or says, I'm good, dude, I'm done. This ain't for me no more. We criticize them as well. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. And leading into that, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I'm a big YouTube surfer. Yeah. I was checking it out. I, uh, and I don't comment too much, but I would say in the fitness industry, there are a ton of fucking pussy boy fuckheads. (laughs) I've never seen so fucking many drama queens that are grown fucking men. I I just, I'm I'm astonished. What are they saying? What are they doing? I don't know. I I hate, I don't want to call anybody out because then it's just going to create more drama. I I, I just find it, I'm like, uh, I can't believe that there is such an attraction for like like the siesta key bachelor mtv teen mom bullshit with men if you talk shit on somebody where i come from you're gonna get your ass kicked you talk shit about something you might get punched in the face 
Like, I don't know, maybe that's the boomer in me and these kids today, but like, they're like, uh, uh, oh, I got to make a video about such and such that said something about me and then fucking hundreds of thousands of fucking views. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God, you're like, you're like women at a fucking beauty salon. You guys best friends now? I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't Is that be- how that works? I, I don't know if that's how it works or not. We'll I c- feed off each other for a couple videos and some attention and then- yeah, Shane uh, says that's What's that called, Shane? What do you call that? Well, clout clout chasing. chasing, yeah, yeah clout chasing, all that, and I understand it. It's fun, Sport. but I don't, I don't get like the shit talking thing of like it's just it's drama queen esque. It's not even like not real shit. Not, no, it's not even not like a real conflict. <laughs> no, it's not like Conor McGregor busting your fucking balls and digging at you. Like everybody knows, like Conor McGregor's funny. Like he's funny when he does it. Yeah. Like, oh, Bob, you got a small dick and a fucking ugly face. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and you're like, bro, fuck you. <laughs> like, I don't know if Bob has a small dick. I do know he has an ugly face, but like, <laughs> you're just going to say funny shit to get a rise out of this. Yeah. These things aren't funny, though. It's like drama, like on Siesta Key or fucking Bachelor shit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just, I'm like, oh, man. And then you get young kids that wonder, like, how do I become successful? Or what do I need to do to become famous? How are you famous? But just be you. Like, be yourself. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with being yourself? What's wrong with being a hardworking motherfucker that goes to work for his family? There ain't nothing wrong with that. Yep. There ain't nothing wrong with that. There are more fucking millionaires in the fucking country. There's more millionaires in the country off of Instagram and YouTube than there are on Instagram and YouTube. So I have a better idea. I bet you you will become more successful and make more money off Instagram and off YouTube than on the shit. Yeah. If that's your dream to do it, go at it, dude. But I'll tell you this. If you're going to have to change who you are, you're going to go through a ton of different personal problems. Because, motherfucker, this is all you're getting. I'm, I mean, this is it. <laughs> I ain't changing. You come in here on a Monday or a Friday... You're getting this fucking guy. If anything, I'm going to be, I'm more intense in person. Yeah, way more. Especially when it comes down to business money and fucking my companies. Yep. And, and then whenever I train, like if I'm in my shit, dude, I fucking, I'm in it. And I had questions. How do I, how do I start my YouTube channel? Start it. What's your angle? How do I become successful? How do I, how do I start my own business? Do you support other people's small businesses? Yeah. What do you, how do you, do you know anything about it? Have you ever talked to a small business owner? Do you know anything about the sacrifice that you're about to have to go through? I talked about sacrifice in bodybuilding and sacrifice in my body and, and physical part of it, the mental parts that I put myself through. But what about sacrifice for business? Spending all your money. All in. Go broke. <laughs> and then if it doesn't work, whoop, you got no money. It's all gone. All gone. New plan. That's why I'm very big on never taking anything for free and supporting small businesses. Yeah. Because I am one. I grew up in a family of it. The guys building my house or working on my house, building the additions. Yeah, bro. You deserve to get paid. Yeah. That's it. Is what it is. Their time is worth, their, their time is worth money. Support your local businesses. Talk to a small business owner. And whenever people, it's it, it just get ready for. I mean, uh, there's no real answer to it. It all depends on what you're starting, what your angle is, and who you are. Because none of this would have happened if I wouldn't have been a bodybuilder. Yeah. None of this would have happened if I wasn't Seth Ferrosi, the bodybuilder. That that fucking teenager, that early twenties young guy that was willing to go to the fucking end for it all. If I never would have did that. None of this would have happened. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to be in this position, everybody, I had to go to the fucking end in bodybuilding. Had to be willing to do it. And then in order for more to happen, whenever in 2016, whenever I came back, I had to be open and willing to be myself and talk like I do and not give a fuck what people say about me. Yep. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Because you know, in the fitness industry, nobody likes talking shit on. Nobody likes getting shit talked about. Nope. I mean, you talk shit all you want on me. I don't really. I'm still my biggest. There's no fo- bearing. My biggest focus is all of the people that are listening, 
making their lives better, taking good supplements, living a better life for themselves, and supporting my businesses, making money. You talk shit on me, it's fine. If I see you, I might say some shit to your face. It's really going to be insulting. Or I might curb stomp you, you <laughs> ignorant fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, had a, young, a young guy when we were down in Texas asked for one piece of advice with starting a business and making it successful. I think they were uh, they're starting their own gym. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I don't know. I never really know what to say when you get that kind of question. But the one thing is I'm like, bro, make sure you're all, all in. All in. 100% in. Like, the sacrifices that you're going to be making with your family, it's the only way. Like, less time at home. I see my wife for one hour in the evening, one hour in the morning. It's all, all I see her. Yeah. I don't talk to my family that lives four hours away. I see them twice a, twice a year now. I disconnected myself from all my friends that I grew up with. I have you. I have my other business partners. I got Shane. <laughs> I got. I just got work. Mm-hmm. And I got my wife, my support system at home. That's all I need. Yep, and your support system at home isn't bitching at you to come home. No, they know that she understands why. Yes. And you're, you're sacrificing all of this for a better tomorrow. Yep. You're enjoying today. Make sure you take time, go on vacations, enjoy yourself. But the grind, yep. the everyday consistency is the most important. And it's the same thing. I mean, that's a really good point, dude. For, for me, like I look back when we started AAR and like, what did, what did we do, bro? It was all day, every day. Yeah. 24-7. I remember picking the kids up from school, taking them to my dad's shop up there where we packed orders and did everything. Yeah. Or they'd be up there with me until fucking 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. So from fucking 4.30, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, 8.30 at night, they were with me packing orders. I remember on releases, Adeline would be, Adeline and Emmy were there until 10, 30, 11. Yeah. I'd take them back, duck them in, and then go back to the shop. Yeah. That's the sacrifices that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Everything. Everything. You ha- and there's no other, and it's like there's no one way. Like You can't teach a class on this. You just have to go through it. You're going to make decisions where you're going to lose money. You're going to lose money. You're going to lose your time. You're going to lose your effort. And it's going to want to make you quit. You're going to lose your whole balance. There is no balance to that at certain points. No. You like to get back to a balance, you know, in between certain points. But no, dude, my one of two things is going to take a back seat when we're fucking in it, when a big campaign's going on or a big project's happening. And Generally, my first thing that falls off me getting to the gym, me eating right, bro, I know that that's not making excuses anymore. That's prioritizing. Prioritizing your 18-hour day. Because now we have, what, 15 to 20 fucking families that need fed at our company? Yep. My treadmill in the morning can wait. My fucking weights can wait. Yep. They're not going anywhere. Yep. Sacrifice. Fucking smooths out again. Campaign's in. Everything's good. All right. Back to cardio every day. Yep. My dad, this is, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll take my dad's advice and give it to everybody listening, and we'll move on. Yeah. If you want to run your own business and be successful, you just have to pick what 16 hours out of the day you want to work and work the ever-loving fuck out of them. Yep. I don't care if your 16 hours are from 6 a.m. on or from 6 p.m. on. Whatever your hours are, you got to pick 16 hours a day, not five days a week, not six days a week, seven, motherfucker. Yep. And that's what you're going to do. That's the best piece of advice I give everybody because that's all he told me. Because now that once, <laughs> whenever I was going through it, we were going through it at the AAR, and I'd be there at late at night at his shop, or I'd be there first thing in the morning before he got there, and he and like we'd start shooting shit. He's like, yep, you're just picking your 16, dude. I'm like, you're right, dude. I'm yep. just picking my 16. It's the best advice. I, I, I'd probably say that is the best advice I've ever gotten about business. Yeah, pick your 16. Pick your 16 and go to fucking work and do it with a relentless, relentless feeling inside of you. You have to. Yeah, If you want to make it, dude, that's what it's going to be. It is not going to feel comfortable. No, and, and it's not going to feel comfortable, and there's going to be people that doubt you. There's going to be people that say you're stupid. There's going to be, and if your significant other is telling you 
and giving you shit, telling you bad things and giving you shit about this, I'm going to tell you something really hard next. Get the fuck rid of them. My parents told me I was dumb. <laughs> you can sell t-shirts. My dad questioned me whenever I invested everything that we invested everything that we ever made in AAR into Axe and Sledge. All of it. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Yeah. Yeah, we got to invest all of it to make this happen, Dad. He's like, do you think it's going to happen? Yes. Why? Because the people I have in the right places are going to fuck shit up just like I do. All right, kid, you never know unless you know. It's like, I wouldn't do it. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't do a lot of things you do, Dad. I'm going to do this, though. I bet on myself, and I bet on you, and I bet on Mike and Pat and what we're going to build. Sacrifice. Pick your 16, motherfuckers. Yeah, I like that. Oh, man, that dude, he... He's got no hip right now. It's all. It's gone. But no, he's no, still no, doing. No, no, he's he still, got a new one. He got a new one. It's not gone. He got a new one. He's still doing paperwork though. Oh, my sister already sent a text to me. Yeah. And what's he doing? He said, "Don't worry." She said to there's a group text for all his siblings. Don't worry, Dad's doing great. He's already telling me what to do about the job that's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking cocksucker! Oh, that dude's a riot. Absolute riot. Uh, you know, I was uh, I was watching the TV last night. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about movies the other day. Uh-huh. You want to go to the movies with me? Yeah. I want to get all stoned up and go to the movies. Let's go. But I don't want to go see, I don't want to invite Hannah or Kim <laughs> because then they'll ruin it. <laughs> I want to get stoned and go to see Bad Boys 3. Yes, I would love to. Because <laughs> that's what all I want to see. Bro, I heard it's really good. I heard it's pretty good, too. That's yeah. why I was like, oh, man. And uh, with Hannah giving me shit about John Wick, I'm like, man, I just want to go get stoned and be Marcus, Lor- Marcus Lawrence. <laughs> Martin, Martin Lawrence. Martin <laughs> Lawrence. Yeah. That's it. I, I was skeptical about the movie, but I saw one of my buddies from back home. He's a big mo- movie buff. Uh-huh. And he was like, totally worth the wait for, for number three. Really? Yeah. He said it was good. No shit? Yep. Mm. We got to go now. I, I was like, because again, I like being a character in the movie whenever I get all fucking into it. And it's like, I want to be there. Yeah. Like I put myself in the decision making process. And I'm like, Jake used to do it with me and now he ruined his life. So, <laughs> I haven't been to a movie in so long. Kim's going to kill me. Because she loves going to the movies. Oh, no. Yeah, like I just don't. It's, um, it's like a love-hate. I don't, actually don't really like going to the movies. Oh, you don't? I get this weird feeling after I leave the movies. Like when I'm in a movie theater, I encapsulate the movie so much that I feel like I was in it. Yes. And then it ends and I leave the movie and I feel like like. My life ended. Like, it's over. Ah, uh, your life sucks. And I'm in this, like, world. It's dark out. It's, like, 1130 at uh, night. I can't, there's nothing to do. And No way. I don't know what it does to me. I get all excited. I'm all fired up I'm after in the it. movies. I'm in it while I'm there. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I guess once I get out, I this is just how I look at everything. Like, I get all fucking pumped up. Yeah. I, I like, like I like come down after. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a come down from it yeah. yeah really good movies like that yeah because I, I it just gets my juices flown and again i try and pull something from it and how can i add it to my life like how can being a blue person from avatar benefit my life <laughs> <laughs> be nicer to the environment use a plastic use a fucking paper straw <laughs> don't, fuck those things don't kill don't kill blue people and go after unobtainium <laughs> yeah that, that tree <laughs> that big special tree oh man Look at Shane over there. He's like, you guys are fucking morons. T- I feel like he's too young for that movie. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Avatar? I didn't watch it. You never watched Avatar? No. 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 Never. Nope. I I don't even know what to say right now. Do you know what it's about? Yeah, yeah. Do blue you know people. what it looks like? Blue yeah, people. the blue people. Blue people. You should watch it. How did you not watch that fucking movie? I don't. You watch all those shitty Netflix shows? I was shows? in college. I didn't watch movies Fuck you. I'm talking. Stop interrupting me. <laughs> you watch all these terrible Netflix? All these shitty, horrible, like, ah, uh, it really wasn't that good. I watched six episodes full season. It wasn't that great. But you never saw Avatar? Nope. Oh, my God. 
I feel like like one day we have to make him watch Braveheart, Avatar, like all these movies while he gets paid, yeah. just to make sure he can like become better. I can't believe you never saw Avatar. Sorry. It's going to really open your mind, Shane. I just feel like I need to degrade him even more right now. <laughs> we need him for the rest of the podcast. We'll work on that. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I thought for sure you'd be an Avatar guy. No, I just didn't get into it. Like like I said, I was in college. I didn't what do watch you mean? movies. Uh, uh, you didn't watch movies in college? No. You watch a lot really. of them now. You're always up on documentaries and stuff. Yep. Never saw Avatar. No, I'm really into them now, but no, not not back then. You may, you may have quite the appreciation for Avatar watching it now, then. I might have to. Is it on Netflix? I probably won't watch it. It's on Netflix. Chain. I want to buy it for you on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I don't even know what to say right now. Uh, well. I, I'm just astonished, yep. dumbfounded. Well, if you... I mean, Jay's really bad with movies. He's horrible. Awful. He's horrible. But has a list. Like, he has a list. And then he'll recommend recommend certain things to me, but I name about every mainstream movie hasn't seen it. I don't know. And he's like, he's a videographer. Should know videos. Should know movies. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm kind of behind right now. I, I, I Avatar. Him not watching Avatar is going to mess with me for a while now. How could you not? You'll be dressing like him in no time after yeah. you watch it. People got really into it. Yeah. It's like the Lord of the Rings thing. People got into it and learned like the, the native language in the movie. I'm like, listen. Like, it's a full language, right? Like, yeah, I was like, that was a little far for me. Yeah. I was like, okay, like you really like it, but I didn't learn the fucking language. You know, I didn't go that far. I only speak three languages. You speak three languages? What, do you have a language guy too? Yeah, I got a yeah, language, language guy. guy. Uh, nice. Nice. Kind of like the candle guy. Kind of like candle guy, yeah. We should have our uh, vagina candles on, uh, what was it, the 12th? Uh, yeah. Yep. Fe- February 12th. February 12th. It's the last two on the planet. Really? They're not making any more. I paid big bucks for these. Yeah, Shane's not in his head. Yep. Yeah. Big bucks. Yeah. I can't wait to smell it. I hope it's everything I think it's going to be and more. <laughs> like, I mean... <laughs> I really hope that it's a politely. Well, I, I love a good smelling vagina. Nothing oh, better. Oh yeah. You know, I got paid the other night for fixing the faucet. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, I got. I got. <laughs> I fixed the faucet at my house, so I did the. Uh, so the faucet was leaking a little bit, and I was like, "Oh, it's a leak. I'll get to it. It's probably like I just got tightened something up." And I let it go for a couple of days, just busy and not thinking about it and being fucking procrastinating and shit. Yeah. We left for Texas and I forgot to fix it before Texas. I come home. And a fucking leak got real bad, fucked up the, cu- the, the, the sink base, and then it actually started leaking into the basement. Mm. So I was like, oh, man, good job, dickhead. So I had to take the day and fix the faucet. And, uh, and I got a nice faucet, made sure it was nice, really good looking, all this. And then, uh, you know, whenever you do, uh, as a man, whenever I do anything above my daily chores, I expect to be paid in, in handies and blowjobs. <laughs> I expect it. Just like whenever you do, whenever she does things above and beyond at home, like I'm willing to do. I, I don't know if she does. Whenever she's a horny, horny piece of work, that's whenever I got to take care of her, treat her a little bit differently. Yeah, yeah. Got to treat her like kind of like a whore. Let her know because I don't know. Get frisky. I like that. I think so. Yeah. I don't think every woman likes to be. Oh, please have sex with me and make me feel wonderful. No, I got to be a little dirty. I like. I like being I kind of like being treated a little rough sometimes yeah like don't just I just don't want that I want something yeah give me some shit make me feel like I'm in a porno I watch pornos for tips yeah I just want to yeah quick tips yeah what can I do differently to make myself better yep I need moves I need moves I'm not getting any more yeah any more no, length, so. no 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 yeah I'm not it's not like grown I can't be like oh like let's get bigger no I got to get better yeah how do I get better yep. there's only one way to find out <laughs> Trial and error. Yep. There's some, so, there's some things I crossed off the list almost immediately. Like some tips. I'm like, oh, I'm into that. Nope, she's not. <laughs> Next. Yeah, can't I'll do that. I'll get the look. I'm like, okay, no. Oh, no, you don't like that. Nope, don't nope, touch okay, that. Okay, don't go that way. Nope. nope. Wrong direction. <laughs> Wrong way. 
No, but uh, where I was getting at was like, I got paid and I was not at my freshest scent. Yeah. And I know I wasn't. Yeah. That's tough. That is. It's a tough move. It's like an unsaid thing. Yeah, you know, and, and sometimes you like a little dirty, you know. Like after a long day of work outside, like in the summertime, and you've both been outside working in the yard all day or whatever it is, and you know you got a little funk to you, and it's like part of the summertime fun. Maybe you were, like, jumped in the pool, worked outside, whatever it is, and you got some funk, and, you know, it's all right. Yep. Yeah, it's a little, a little fucked up. I don't know. Yeah, everybody does that. Like Come on. A little, like... Like post workout action. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Already into and it. Plus, and if you guys are together and you love each other and you're into it, yeah, fucking let it rip. Yep. But I, if I, it's like early in the relationship, wash your balls. Yeah, you gotta make sure they're nice and clean and smelling fresh. Yep. I even let myself go a little far and don't trim. If I don't trim, I kind of like, like whenever I get busy. Yeah. And like I kind of let myself go a little bit. Yeah. And I look down. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Son Seth. Of a bitch. What are you doing in that jungle down there? You look like you got a like fucking. You look like you have like, like the nose of an anaconda sticking out of the fucking, out of the jungle. You know, I like to. I'd like to think of myself a little better. I can't make them any bigger. I can make them look bigger. You know. Yep. Scale it back. Yeah. Scale that shit back. Yep. Get the edger out. Yeah. Trim that up. Trimmed up. Yeah. I like to. Be, I like to be trimmed up. I don't like going. I'm not. I can't do the full thing. Yeah. Fuck that. I can't do that. I'm not into that. No, trimmed up. No, you should have your man. You should have yeah. some hair on there. Yeah. Not a boy. I just. Yeah, trimmed up. It's important. <laughs> what if, if it's the dead of winter though? It's like <laughs> there's so I many things. <laughs> I just laugh because, like, I know when I stink. Everybody knows when they stink whenever it's too far. And I wasn't <laughs> quite there the other day, but like, yeah. I've I've done I remember whenever I was fucking whenever I'm training hard as fuck like working out and uh, and like you'll sit back on the incline like if I'm finished with like Smith machine incline presses or like uh, like finishing a chest workout on incline and you know your legs are spread apart and you reach down to grab the dumbbells or like you're open sitting back all propped up and like after you're done you back up and then you like lean in lean lean forward and like you're kind of sitting there with your nuts in your face. And whenever I can smell what's going on, I'm like, God damn, how did that happen? That happened in one hour. How does that happen? Because I'm pretty clean. My ass is definitely cleaner than my hands. Like, yeah. my ass cheeks, they're definitely cleaner than my hands. Yeah. Like, there's less germs on my butt cheeks than there are on my hands. Mm -hmm. And I eat with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever see that Penn and Teller thing? No. They did a thing where, like, they, they did, like, the swabs on if your ass is cleaner oh, than your, yeah. if your ass cheeks are cleaner than your hands. Yeah. They are. That it's like nasty. It's like washing your hands after you take a piss. Yeah. Okay? Why, would, why do you wash your hands after you take a piss? Why? Like to wash. Wash the penis off your hands? Yeah. Okay. What about what your hands have touched and is now on your penis? So are you saying a pre-wash? I am I I can unzip my pants and whip my dick out without what? touching my dick. Oh, okay. You know, like you just pull your underwear down, yeah. dick flops out, you go pee, you a little shake, dick goes back in. Yeah. Zip your pants up, no touch. Okay? Yep. I prefer a pre-wash because my hands are definitely dirtier than my dick. I don't want your hands on my penis. You don't need a dirty dick. No, I don't want that. I no. mean, I, I'm I'm a I'm a double washer to be honest. Like if I know my hands are dirty, like at the Arnold. Yeah. Like whenever we're at the Arnold, I shook a million people's hands. Yep. I'm washing my hands going in. Take my piss, and then I'm washing my hands on the way out. And we're good because I don't want like I don't want nobody touching my penis and me my penis touching anybody else's hands. So no. I do a double wash. I prefer it that way. Makes sense. Yeah. Got to keep your penis clean, right? Yep, clean dick. Clean dick. Yeah, yeah. Double wash. Double wash. <laughs> Shane. He's like, what the fuck? You guys talk about your dick more than anything. I love my penis. It's, one, it's my, yeah, my most important. It's an extension of me. Do you, do you, oh, dude, this is fucking great. Did oh, you here see we that? go. Did you see that fucking meme? <laughs> Which one? That meme that was like, uh, I think you brought it up. I've saw it, seen it before. Whenever, have you ever just got a random fucking hard on and all of a sudden look down and be like, 
What do you see, boy? What do you got? Where, where's it at? Where's, where's it at? It? <laughs> where's it? <laughs> yeah, I think someone. I think someone posted in the Axe and Sludge group. It was a meme. <laughs> when your dick gets hard for no reason, you're like, "What do you see? What is it, boy? What where's he at? What, what, no, where's he at? Yep. Where, where's he at?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that is fucking funny. I love the memes these people find. It's, it's our sense of humor to a T. But how many times have you just gotten a fucking random boner and been like, what the fuck is going on, bud? Oh, yeah. What do you got? What's up? Yep. And and if if the wife's home, got to show it off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's that surprise? <laughs> it's not even Thursday. <laughs> Bro, that's the that I, I uh, being a young kid, like being like fifteen, sixteen years old, and your fucking dick is just out of hand is hilarious. Yeah, it's like you're just like, what the fuck is this thing? You it takes you years to figure it out. Some people never even figure out their dicks. Yep, took me a long time. I'm still figuring it out. I know. Sometimes I get a new thing thrown in there, and I'm like, I didn't even know I like that. I swear, I think I think Hannah watches porn too. She does a couple nasty things to me here and there that I question. How do you I'm know like, that? I'm like, where did that come from? Did you watch that? I, I, it's we've been together for two fucking years, and you definitely would have pulled that out by now. Yeah, Kim pulls out new moves. New move, and I'm just like, ooh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's just a little raunchy sometimes, and I'm like, God damn, okay, I'm taking it all in. Yep, I like that shit. <laughs> I like that shit. <laughs> Keep yourself educated. What do you got now? Man, you're you're all full of shit today. <laughs> I'm having fun telling stories yeah. about everything. What do you got? Um, how I say I like that shit. <laughs> uh, that came from whenever I worked with uh, a guy from whenever I got out of college. I won't name his name. His name might rhyme with Nick. <laughs> <laughs> So, got out of school, and I worked. Uh, I, I worked for this company doing construction, uh, safety guy. Yeah. And he was my mentor. This dude was just a good motherfucker, good motherfucker, dude. Awesome guy, and like he just treated all his people really well. He took care of everybody on the job sites. Dude was just always on it with people. Never lied to him. Did his shit. Really good dude. Long hair. Looked like a fucking eighties rock star. Awesome guy, and. Um, I remember we went to a titty bar one time together, um, and uh, and we went we went to this we went there and uh, he we got pretty tuned up, and we're just sitting there hanging out, cool bar like you just could sit back and kind of people watch. It yeah. was wild, but there was this one dancer, and you know, at every club there was always just this uh, like a thicker girl, all right, mm -hmm. and we're pretty tuned up, and he leans over and he's like. Mm. I like that shit. <laughs> and I'm like, I look at him I'm like, what? And he's like, ah, oh. he gets his te grits his teeth, talking through his teeth. And he's like, I like that shit. I'm like, you like that big shit? And he's like, I love it. I'm going to go get in there. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> dude goes up. He just got in there, um, <laughs> got in there. And then whenever he went up, she told him that he looked like Dale Earnhardt Jr. He came, I just cut out. Oh. I cut out there for a second, Shane. But he just, uh, so he came back and he's like, she told me I look like Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I'm like, she just wants more fucking money, Nick. Does he look like Dale Earnhardt Jr.? He has red hair. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Oh, bro, it was a fucking riot. Fucking right. So whenever you hear me say, mm, I like that shit. That's where it's from. My teeth are gritted. And it's usually something that's kind of fucked up or like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta pull that pull the good from everybody. That's you gotta it, pull man. something from everybody. Oh fuck. Oh man, that was really there's so many fucking crazy stories with that son of a bitch. Oh man. <laughs> Another time. <laughs> We went, we went to, uh, we were at this club and we got fucking tore up and I'm, you know, big dude at the time, big dude wearing work boots, jeans, and a white t-shirt. And he looks like fucking Mr. Rockstar. Yeah. Right. Long hair, 
fucking just looks he looks like a rocker okay so we're in there and we probably drank we probably drank like 15 16 beers a piece okay so we're all we're all tuned up at this place uh-huh. and i'm sitting there just fucked up like lean back legs spread open wide just fucked up like to the point where i'm like I, i'm not gonna i'm gonna have trouble walking out of here and making it home yeah all right so all of a sudden he's talking to these girls next to us and he's talking to them and like i'm completely oblivious like i'm having trouble seeing straight and i just know he's talking to the girls and and uh two girls and then all of a sudden like they get up and they walk away he looks over at me and he says Hey, dude, with whatever's about to happen, just go with it. <laughs> and I look over, and I'm like, go with what, dude? I can't even fucking see straight right now. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? He's like, it's all good. Just go with it. And I'm like, here we go. I'm like, I can't do too much other than fucking sit here right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep sitting here and go with whatever's about to occur. Yeah. So. Fucking three to three, five minutes later, all of a sudden the two girls come back and they come up to me and they hand me napkins with their names and numbers on it and says, give us a call after everything's done for the night so we can meet up together. And I'm like, fuck. Okay. So I, so I take the fucking napkins and I'm just like, okay. So I sit back and I look over at him. And he's just fucking smiling, like nodding his head. He's like, yeah. (laughs) I I look, I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now, dude? We just came to hang out. Like, it's just fun looking at boobs, dude. I don't want this fucking shit. Yeah. Get this shit the fuck away from me. Okay. (laughs) Just fun looking at boobs. That's it. Yeah. And then he's like, just wait, just wait, just wait. And I'm like, wait for fucking what? So I put the napkins on the table. I'm sitting there just... I lean over, I'm like, okay, dude, fuck is going on? He's like, they think I'm the famous rocker in town, and you're my bodyguard. <laughs> I'm like, no, fucking dead. He's like, yes, they do. He's like, I just wanted to see what happened if they believe it. And they do. And I'm like, yeah, because they're dumb strippers, dude. <laughs> fuck do you think? <laughs> So, so oh, it was a fucking ride. Does he have a rock star look to him? Oh fuck yeah, this yeah. dude can get down. Oh yeah. Oh fuck yeah. Like he can actually like play an instrument. Like he, oh, he rocks out on the fucking drum. Oh, he's a drummer. Okay. Bad motherfucker. Like so what? He was just telling him that he's this oh, big yeah, he's time just, drummer. Yeah, or? dude. I think it was uh, who the fuck was in town. Ah, uh, I don't know who was in town. I can't remember who was in town, but he looked like he belonged in the band, so he yeah. told them he was, and I don't remember exactly. And you looked like the muscle. <laughs> I just sat there because I was all fucked up, dude. Dead stare, like, ho, 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 I like, can't even see straight. Yeah. And I just looked like a tough dude just sitting there, big as fuck, sitting there. <laughs> He's like, just go with it. I'm like, what the oh fuck? Oh, my God. Oh, it was a good time. Oh, riot. <laughs> I'll never forget it. He was a good dude. I met a lot of good people doing everything that I've done, working all the different jobs I have, working for everybody, meeting a ton of people. And that's, uh, I really enjoy that. I enjoy just shooting shit with people, learning about people, having fun. I mean, that's how you, that's how you grow as a person, I believe. We take that little piece away from each person that you've met along the way. Everybody. Yep. You got to pull something from everybody that you meet. Yep. Every person that you meet is here for a reason, like I tell everybody. Everybody's here for a reason. You're on this planet for a reason. So why not be the best motherfucker you can be so that you become great? Yep. Be the best person you can be at something so whenever you are needed by somebody you can affect their lives in a positive way. Like, bro, having the contractor, Jason, at my house, bro, that dude's fucking killing it. Really good people, just taking care of the house, doing a good job, just being a good contractor. And it's like, now, bro, you're getting all the work that I need done. You're getting everything. I got a guy. Whenever I have a guy and someone asks me, I'm recommending him. And he's recommending people to me. Like, those people, he might not be a millionaire, 
He might not be fucking so well known on Instagram and have a million followers, but the dude has a tremendous value in life. There's more to life than just the internet. Here I am saying that and I'm big time on the internet. Go be the best version of yourself for the people in your life. I mean, everybody hopes to do something great with their life. But man, I tell you what, if you make really good sauce, you make more than just good sauce. Yep. You bring people together. You change a house. The guy doing the work at my house isn't just building an addition. He's adding on to my life. He's building the room that my child is going to grow up in. He's adding value to my life. I may look a little too deep into some things, but that's how it fucking is. That's what it means. That's why you hire a quality person. And the way he's treating me, my kids, he's in my home. The way he's treating it all is changing how things are done. It's all for the better. He knows that. He knows that that's, it's more than just a room. That's what people miss in life. Do that with everything. You know, and that's why you need to make sure you support your small businesses. That's why you need to make sure you support your community. That's why you need to make sure that you're the best person you can be. You never know when you're needed for someone to become better. You know, that's why, and that's why, you know, we do what we do. Gotta kill it. Sir. Be the best motherfucker you can be. <clears throat> oh, man. Tell you what, that is something that is pretty wild about um, how everybody does get caught up in having a million followers. Yeah. And having a bunch and being famous and TikTok and all the weird shit going Fuck. on. It's Everything a, like a it. Bro, it's really intense. How about you be famous in your circle, dude? How about you be famous to your family? Yeah. You I don't, know? I don't, uh, I get, I get lost about it. And, uh, and I mean, <laughs> we're in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm one of, I'm one of the people that are famous, some somewhat famous on here, but I can't, I can't stress to everybody enough to be yourself and just be good at what you're here to do. Yeah. And if you want more out of life, then go after it. And you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to lay it all on the fucking line, dude. You got to. Bro, this this platform we're on now, I mean, we've talked about doing podcasts the last two years. Oh, yeah. Fuck, we ordered half this equipment two years ago. It took us two years to have a fucking little opportunity of time to sit down and do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we built this groundwork over the last four. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And we're just, in, and again, feels like we're just getting started. Yeah. Feels like just yesterday I was broke as fuck. Ooh. Yeah, talking about these stories. This was not 10 years ago. This was a couple years ago. Oh, bro. This was 12 months, 18 months, 24 months ago. Four years ago, I had no fucking money. Four years ago, I had no fucking idea where I was going. Yep. I had no idea. All I knew is I wanted something bigger than what I had. I just didn't know quite yet which road I was going to take or who was going to be there with me. And Fuck, the last job I was at, dude, I thought that was my forever job. <sighs> I thought I was going to work work there till the day I died. I thought I was in with a really good dude. I thought I was going to have a piece of the company one day because we built it out of his fucking garage. Oh. I learned one big crucial fucking thing working there. I learned exactly what I didn't want to be. And I knew how I wanted to treat employees. I knew how I wanted the customers to look at me. I knew everything. I knew exactly what I didn't want to do. That's the good that you pulled. And that wasn't one year. That was five years. That mm. was six years of shit. Man. It's crazy. So for five years, I thought, oh, here's my forever thing. Made okay money. Then went all the way back to what I was making 17, 18 years old for about 12 months, 16 months. No. Had to sell a car just to get by. Made the, nothing. Bro, the year we started AAR, and then up until we launched, uh, up until we launched Iron Academy, I didn't know what the fuck was gonna happen. Nope. Then it all hit when all of our accounts hit zero. 
money started to come in. We're like, okay, now we have a little bit of money to still buy shirts. We can take a little bit of money now. Still not getting paychecks. Here's 400 bucks. Fucking right. Here's another 500 bucks, dude. Fucking right. Can do this this month. Kim doesn't have to pay this for me anymore. Hmm can pay this personal loan that I took to buy all the camera equipment that we needed to start the business to buy the computer we needed to run the business man was that wild yeah dude I'm, there's so many things not one step of the way was just handed or easily accessible what do you do what do you do to keep yourself grounded because right now we do have wildly successful companies yet we're just getting started yeah we have way more money than either of us have ever had uh yet i don't really look at life any differently i don't look at life any differently so what do you do to like keep yourself grounded every day to not let because let's face it there are a ton of people on instagram that do fake everything yeah they don't have money. They just pretend that they do to look famous. Yeah. So I know how much money you make because that's how much money I make. Mm -hmm. What do you do to keep yourself grounded? I, I think I, I haven't changed who I'm working for. Like, I'm working for for my wife. I work for you and your kids. I now work for Pat and Mike and their children. I work for Shane. I work for all of our other staff. Because without any one of you guys, I would not be in the position I am right now. Without my wife saying, yeah, dude, go ahead, quit your job. I, I believe in you. I believe in what you and Seth are going to do. Meanwhile, I'm going to be a nurse practitioner school and working 60 hours a week as an RN. I got you. So when we and my wife swapped roles in our household, that's when it all changed for me. I, I was, I supported, we, we flopped roles so many times. She supported me. I supported her for a long time while she was in nursing school, became an RN. She's like, I want to go back to school. I'm like, do it, dude. I, I'm, I'm able to work from home a couple of days a week. It's your time. Halfway through, hey, babe, I think I'm going to quit my job, start something new. Holy fuck, dude. Well, she's working 60 hours and going to nurse practitioner school. The, the, the guy that ran the program for her for her nurse practitioner program said at their first meeting in Illinois, you cannot do this program and work full time. You can't, you will not be able to pass this. You will not be able to do it. She did it up until the end, working clinical, working all of, uh, working at, as an RN and doing all the book work. Fucking savage. Savage dude. Savage. For us to be able to get on our feet, <laughs> I'd leave for two weeks out of the fucking month, drive out here to Pittsburgh. <laughs> She's dealing with all sorts of shit on top of trying to pass tests and fucking, and be good at it. Like, bro, this isn't me going through college and just like, oh, you do what you need to do. I got my bachelor's. No, dude, you're a nurse practitioner. You better fucking know your shit. You're in the health profession. You need to make sure people don't die. Bro, you need to know everything better than everyone else. Man. And, uh, you know, graduated there and I mean, fuck, she only officially graduated and got a job right before we moved out here last November. You're in a few months. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, so, and, and it's and the, all I'm looking for is to let everybody know what you do to not let money or anything go to your head. Yeah. I mean, I, I have nice things. I have a couple nice cars. Uh, that's the shit I'm into. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why I buy those things. I buy them for me. I don't buy them for anyone else. I buy them for the feeling I have when I'm, when I'm in that car or I'm riding that dirt bike around my property. That's for me. And I don't need to tell anyone else about that to feel good about myself. It's only for me. And then everything else is for you guys. I mean, if I never crossed paths with you or met your two kids and your family that made such a difference to me, I mean, fuck, dude. Yeah, I, I I completely agree. Yeah, I mean, there's times whenever uh, uh, there's times whenever I personally like, you know, I joke about being the most important person here and fucking with Shane and busting balls, 
but you know now whenever I have this many employees and I pretend that I don't have business partners and that it's on me I have to operate at the highest level and there's not there's and, and you know there's times whenever I do uh, get away from myself and think that I need to do more or think that I I should do something but I'm just me yep I'm still just dumb podunk Seth from Western PA you know, I, and, and all I do is I just want to make sure that everybody has a better life. And I do have nice things. I do spend money building, my, you know, clearing my land and property. I'm going to build a stupid garage. And I do want to have nice vehicles and I want to do all these things. But the prioritization of where I am is not for anyone else. Yeah. Like you said, I agree 100%. Like I think about at night whenever I lay up my head on my pillow and I'm vulnerable, I think about everybody. Like Zach about the Urus, that Lambo Urus. Yeah. That fucker sent me a picture and he said, fuck you. <laughs> sent me a picture of the Lambo and said, fuck you. <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, oh, I'd never buy that car. That's your dream car. And I told him in the text, I said, I will hustle my fucking balls off every single fucking day so that you have the opportunity to hustle your balls off every day to have that. Yeah. I'm not going to buy it for you. I ain't going to give it to you, but I'm going to make sure that I hustle my ass off so that you have the opportunity to do the same. And he does, dude. That fucking kid kills it for us. Same yeah. way Shane kills it for us. Same way everybody. And, and, and you know, there's a great pride in that. And I think that uh, a lot of people kind of get caught up in the materialistic things. Like, yeah. motherfucker, I love, <clears throat> I love cool vehicles. Yep. I like trucks. I like cars. I like SUVs. You name it, I like it. I want one. I'm going to get one. It's going to be nice. It's going to be great. But it's for me. I'm successful. I want people to be successful in their way. Bro, if, you're, if you have all this nice shit, but your kids don't like you, or your wife thinks you're a piece of shit and she's only with you because she has to be because you have kids and all the money and all this and don't want to split the family up, bro, you ain't ever going to be rich. Yep. You got to have a balance. And that's that part about surrounding yourself with good people. Bro, Hannah, don't give me no shit. No shit about nothing. Nothing. <laughs> bro, she's not the mother of my two kids. Yet I can up and leave and go to Texas for four or five days just leave. Hey, see ya. I'm going to take a fucking four and a half hour plane trip and leave for three, four, five days. You're going to take care of everything, okay? You handle it all. I can leave with no thought in my head. I'm good. She's going to take care of those kids. She's going to love them. She's going to feed them. She's going to make sure everything's great. <laughs> You're an asshole if you don't think I'm going to give my all at everything I do in life. Yep. And if anybody out there that's listening doesn't feel the same you got some fucking problems yep bro like i all like i've been saying enjoy your life be fiscally responsible but you better enjoy it go on that vacation every year go do special things with your significant other because we all know our days are numbered here and yep. this whole thing with kobe bryant dying early and his young daughter dying early and all the other people on there too they were not old people they were all young they didn't get to fulfill parts of their life that they want to. Bro, do them. Be fiscally responsible and make sure you enjoy it. And the only thing I can say is just be willing to work your ever-loving fucking balls off. Yep. Work your balls off and enjoy your life. Have to, man. I do. Yep. I want it all. I don't want a little bit. Fuck no. I man. don't want Zach to have a little bit. I don't want Shane to keep making the same money he's making. I want him to make more. So I got to create the opportunity to do so, just like you said with everything. That's how you keep grounded. Yep. And do uh, do these things for yourself. Yeah. Cuz yeah, yeah, if if you if you have a significant other that is not so Okay, I'll start with this. If you're not spending money all the time on stupid shit, okay? So you're just you're being responsible. And you still don't have a significant other that supports you and supports you being gone the long hours and supports your dream and sees the big picture, bro, why, why are you with them? Yeah. You can't. Like, if, if you guys are not on the if, – if you're looking to do big things, bro, you got to be on the same fucking page. Oh, yeah. The entire process. Oh, yeah. And they got to fuck. Fucking right. They got to get down. Yep. Because you're going to have some weird fucking tendencies. Yep. 
And I mean, that's how I found out how much I like Hannah. Yep. I don't like her. I really like her. And I love her yeah. a lot. It's, it's, there's so many factors that come into it all. And it's just wild because I do, I'm one of those people that do believe everything happens for a reason. Yep. Bro, all the fucking shit I went through in my life and everything I've done has led me to this point. And I love it. So therefore, I can't regret nothing. Man, do I have some fucked up crazy stories. But if I never would have done them things, I wouldn't be this guy. Yep. So you got to do it. And you got to go through the shit and you got to work through it all. You got to be willing. And it's not like nothing's going to feel great. But you got to go through it. No, you, you may even have a moment where you're like, oh, I feel like I made it. I had that feeling. I had it a few times. Yeah. And then the very next morning, that low. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs talk about that high, the highs and lows. Yeah. Where you're so high, you're in the clouds, you're fucking, for as high the highs can be, that's how low the low feelings are. Oh, yeah. And that may just be in your own head. It's, it's nothing out of the ordinary at the company or with your relationships. It's just that mental thought of like, okay, I'm, I need to be uncomfortable again. What's my next fucking thing? Black Friday. That was me, Black Friday. Yep. Holy fuck, this is awesome. Everything we worked for is coming together and going fucking spectacularly. It's going off thousands upon thousands of orders for both sites. Everything's great. Holy fuck, the big money investment that we made, we made it back and a bunch more. That's great. This is the fucking greatest thing in the world. This is like one of the most fulfilling feelings I've ever happened from a business group, man. This is awesome. This is great. All of a sudden... Oh, uh, this isn't the end. This is just the beginning. Now you have to work harder. Because all that hard work, those long hours, those full days and full weeks and full months leading into this, they're all gone now, dude. You're back at zero. Yep. Because that money that you just made now has to be circulated back into your company. New inventory has to be ordered. And you have to go bigger. Because if you have more customers and a better base, boy, that was the whole point of it. Now you got to get bigger. You got to invest more, more time, harder work, become smarter, operate at an even higher level than you were. How the fuck is that possible? I just gave everything I had. No, no, dude, you got to figure it the fuck out. Yep. Oh, bitch. I thought that was it. That's what I mean. I had that high and then the low came, but it wasn't really a low. It was a realization. Yeah. And then there's times whenever I, I, I just, you know, like, like coming down from drugs. The come down, whenever you're down, you're like, holy fuck, dude, how am I going to get better? How do I do even better than this? How do I make sure that, how do I, how, how do I make more money so that Shane can get paid? Because there's fucking 16 other people at the company and me and you and everybody. How do I, how do I do these things? I don't know, dude. Is there a book on that? No, there's just people talking about it like us going through it and say, you just got to learn, dude. Go with your gut feelings. And I tell you what, the second that you turn into a piece of shit and start making piece of shit decisions, that's when you're fucked. Yep. I don't want none of that. Oh, yeah. I love this shit. I fucking get off on business. Yep, that's my shit. Go yeah. in from, uh, and, and, and for everybody out there that, you know, whatever it is, your aspirations in life, whether it be physical, bodybuilding, fucking anything, your job, whatever it is, bro, you have to learn how to transfer your energy into doing these things. I found out that I love fucking business and I love what I do just as much as I love fucking bodybuilding, just as much as I love food, just as much as I love the hobbies. This is not work for me. Except I have, it is work because I have to figure out how to become better at it. And I don't exactly know. It's all a learning experience. Everything that you do in life is an experience and you have to gain from it. Pull the good from it. Find it. Even, even if it's bad, it still can be good because you learn from it. Learn from every single fucking thing that you do. All of it. Hmm. I love this shit. Man, this was intense today. Feels good, though. Story time. I love it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Fucking steroids and strippers. Just maybe didn't even put any cocaine in there either. No. I saw this fucking hilarious meme. <laughs> it's all hilarious meme. It was like, 
<laughs> it said, "I maybe I screenshotted it before I. Well, before we do the questions, I'll see if I screenshotted this fucking meme. I had to have. It was too funny not to. Yeah, oh, here it is. I'll post it in my stories today too. It says, uh, "No, it was this dude. He posted this on Twitter. It looks like he says." Me and my wife used to take ecstasy and lick cocaine off of each other's genitals. Today we had a heated argument because I lied to the dog. Life comes at you fast. (laughs) 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 That's for everybody. For everybody that's been with their significant other since they're like late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, <laughs> me and my wife used to take ecstasy and lick cocaine off each other's genitals. Today, I had, we had a heated argument because I lied to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking great. Oh, motherfucker, dude. I tell you. That's, that's the real life shit right there. Oh, man. It really is, dude. It really is. It's fucking funny because, you know, that just means that they lived, they were living, and now, don't lie to the fucking dog. <laughs> just life. It's funny how that, how that relationship evolves like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, fuck, dude. I've been, I've been with Kim since I'm 16 years old. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, yeah. That was one thing. I, I'll say one more fucked up story before we get to the thing. So whenever I was deciding who I wanted to be with in my life after my after my marriage was over and family changed and everything. And I was, you know, with Emmy and I, Emmy, Addie and I, it's like, I need to find a woman. I need to find a good woman, but you know, I don't want a fucking whore, but I don't want a woman that's never experienced life. So she wants more dick in her life at some point and fucking all that. Like didn't experience enough. Yeah. So like I was being very selective and I had to be very real with myself. That's part of the whole realization of me. Like why I talk about everything the way I do and, just it you can't hide it it's not fake like let's face it like i said i don't want to be with a woman that's a complete whore yeah i don't want to do that that's just not any fun then i gotta fucking worry and i'm stressed out about you being a fucking whore all this shit but then i also don't want a woman that's not experienced in life and then later on in life after the seven year itch and all the shit goes through and they're like oh man you know, I really wish I would have fucking did this or that. And like, or it just comes up, pops up at like a party when you're drunk and says something inappropriate. And you're like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> so choosing Hannah was tough. But one of the, own, one of the, not only, but one big part was I went to IUP, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. It's a very big party school. That's where I got my PhD in drugs and alcohol. I probably teach a class on it. <laughs> <laughs> But she went there as well, and she was a sorority girl. Uh So, I mean, I went to the same school that she did just a little earlier in life. But being at IUP and and, and the way they got down there, I'm like, okay, so you went through some shit in life. (laughs) You've been there. It's all right. Like, you're out of it. You see, you're a good girl. Like, I like you. You're a very nice person. But going to IUP, I was there. I was the party guy. I know. I am ashamed of a few things there, okay? (laughs) And most people that have been to IUP are ashamed of a few things they did at IUP and don't like to fucking talk about it, okay? (laughs) So, hence, I was like, oh, so you went to IUP. And I'm like, God damn it, fuck. Don't tell me that. And then I'm like, there's a good thing out of this, though. Yep. Pretty sure you're not going to want any more dick than you've already had from there. (laughs) Oh so, my God. so there was something good to pull from it all. Yep. Needless to say, got, I'm a, it, got I'm, it out of your system. I'm a happy man. I got it out of my system. I don't want no other pussy. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm still able bodied and fucking getting that shit. She does the same to me. She's been winning the fucking battles though. Hmm. Everybody knows there's like a challenge. Yep. Do I get you off before you get me off, or how does that work? I don't fucking like it. She's been winning. Yeah. I'm losing. I think I've lost like three or four in a fucking row. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I haven't taken a win in a while. I'm getting rocked. Yeah. It's not fair. I mean, I like it. I, I but... love it. And she loves it too. She's getting a fucking kick out of it. Yeah. I mean, I'm still like back coming back from Texas. I had a fucking, I, was, I had a 12, a 12 gauge shotgun loaded, fucking locked loaded and fucking <laughs> hair trigger. It was sad. <laughs> she thought it was funny as fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> but needless to say, like, yeah, yeah. I'm losing now. I don't like it. I don't know how to step my game up. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying everything way too much. It's the pregnancy sex thing. Yeah. It's a real thing. 
She's eating me up. Fuck. I got I to gotta figure something out. Mm. I'm gonna trend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking no. Wa- what, no, what, sorry. Wonderful solution, Bob. Let's start doing trend. Get right. trend dick. Fucking dick her down. That's a summertime thing. Oh, that is a summertime thing. Summertime. Yeah. Vegas. <laughs> Vegas put me in this fucking position. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> fucking rock star in Vegas. Oh, man. Nope. God damn it. I was just kidding. <laughs> I, maybe. I was, I was just kidding. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. Shane should start taking trend, too. His woman will love it. No, I'm good. He's good. <laughs> He's good. All right, everybody. Uh, again, Shane is a gift. Let's do the gift oh, first. Oh yeah, it's a gift. We're gonna do the gift. What first. gift? Oh, so we were talking about uh, possible sponsors on the podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, I went and got you guys me undies. Me undies. Yeah. You bought us underwear, Shane. <sighs> yeah, I got you guys. I've underwear. never been more excited Let to wear un- wear underwear from another man. Are those tacos? <laughs> <laughs> tacos and hot sauce. Yeah, I got I got you pizza and I got Seth tacos and hot oh, sauce. Oh man, Hannah loves tacos. Bro, look at these pizza boxer briefs. These are sick. These are these are these seem very comfortable and they, soft. I have so many pairs of them. You wear a lot of me undies. I think that's the only thing I have. So Bob and I, I I'm a big underwear guy because I like my ball bag feeling good. Yeah. And uh, so I always wear the athletic Adidas underwear. I have like probably 14 pair. Um, and they make my dick look great. The, the, the stripes to the side, the horizontal stripes, always a good look. Yeah. Being not a huge guy in the pants, you always do anything to look better when you're half naked. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little thing that uh, keeps it fresh, and whenever I'm having a good dick day, I make sure to leave it out for a while. These look like very great dick day pants, dick day underwear. Um, I'm excited. I think you guys are going to like them. They're, I, they're can't, really I can't wait to put them on. I'm gonna put them on. I'm gonna show Hannah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna enjoy it. Me undies. Speaking of ball bags, we always get our ball bags fucked with in TSA. Oh yeah, they love touching my nuts. It's usually you. They fucking. They go, see some sort of warm f- warmth. Warm. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna feel everywhere on your body. I know, dickhead. Go yeah. at it. There's been times I drop my pants and well, they well, get yeah. all fired up. Oh yeah, they're like, oh, do you need a private screening? No, no. dude. Here, go ahead. Drop my pants. Go Whoop. Ahead. There's my nuts. Actually, they, that one lady's like, get this guy out of here. Oh, yeah. That last, so the last one, Shane, we were there. We were at TSA in Pittsburgh. Walk through, and I always get, like, my crotch, my underarms, and then probably, like, sometimes around my neck. So um, so they come, this, this guy's like, oh. I stand there immediately. I walk out, put my arms out. Like, I'm ready. Spread my legs and go. And he's like, hold on. We got to look. I'm like, bro, I know you're going to touch my fucking ball bag. <laughs> and he looks at me and I'm like, and he's like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> because it showed up on there. I was like, it's okay, dude. Just go to town. I was like, just make sure you make me feel special. <laughs> you know, say something <laughs> fucked up. This lady's watching this. And I'm laughing like, uh, and like you know, egging him on. This, yeah, he's fucking egging it on and everything. And the lady works at TSA. And, she, and she's like, she tells him, she's like, okay, you can go for it. You don't have to listen to him. And he's like, I listen to him every day. And I was like, yep, he likes it. She's like, all right, get him out of here. And then, so and then I kept going. And she's like, okay, get him out of here. I saw in your story, you were like, I'm winning one nothing. Yep. Oh, yeah, that lady couldn't fucking stand me. Yep. Because it's like, I'll drop my fucking pants and leave my underwear on. I don't get, what the fuck? Yeah. I've been on stage in front of thousands of people in fucking skivvies. I just want to make it to my terminal. Yep, I don't care. Lady, yep. I'll take my clothes off. I'll walk around. I'll fucking walk through here, small dick. I don't give a shit. Fuck are you going to say? Yep. Oh, look at tiny dick Seth. <laughs> okay. I still dick down. I still make money. My kids love me. I'm good, dude. I don't give a fuck. Let's have fun. I'm going to wear these. I'm going to give a full review of MeUndies for the next podcast. I'm excited. Yeah, they, they feel very soft and comfy. I know. They're unreal. It's like a fake soft, but soft. Rub it on my face. I'm not putting these on my face. I don't know if Shane had these on. They feel really soft. I can't wait. I, I mean, if Sh- that's why Shane has a smile on his face. His ball bag's nice and held tight and softly. Mm. It all starts with the, the undies. I'm excited. All right. Thank you, Shane. Yes, Welcome. thank you. I'm excited. Did we pay for those or did you? I think you guys paid. Oh, okay, okay, good. You got to use the company yep. card. <laughs> this is scientific experimentation yeah. going on. Marketing. <laughs> Marketing. 
All right, everybody. <laughs> Again, thank you for listening to the podcast. Right now, we're going to go on to the questions of Ask the Internet. Uh, they are a box of a huge box of cards from Barstool Sports. Uh, they have them online for sale. We're not sponsored by them. Just like to support them. It's great. They are Ask the Internet questions as fucked up as you are. These are not clean questions. One may be Shane picks three questions every day or every time we film a podcast. Handle them at the end of the day, and the end of the podcast. Our goal is for you to ask. Your coworkers, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your pastor, your priest. Ask anybody. Join in the fun. Make sure they're having fun. This is all here to listen, be inspired, be motivated, become a better person, and laugh. That's why we do this podcast. The one question, the one thing that I do ask of all of you, please share the shit out of this fucking podcast. Yep. Tell everybody about it. Our goal is for you to become a better person, and we want to make sure that we're reaching new people to be inspired and become a better version of themselves. Be a hard-working motherfucker. All right, Shane. I'm ready. Let's go. Bob, are you ready? Yep. How uh, many dick questions are in there? Uh, I think we've got two dick questions. One and a half. One okay. and a half. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. The first one's uh, debate the internet. If you had to get one movie quote tattooed on your body, what would it be? Hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> I had like a million things run through my head now. It's definitely from one movie. I'm just trying to narrow it down. Oh, you, you, so you got the movie. Tell uh, me the movie. Give me d- the movie. Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, dude. If I'm going all out and I'm putting a fucking movie quote on my body, bro, I got a dozen from there that I'm thinking of. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I uh, might need to get more than one. So you're going Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, because I reference it the most. It's my most referenced movie. I got. I just got blocked. I had two, and I was on a roll. But now, uh, like, it just scooted out of my head. So you have Dumb and Dumber. Hold on, I'm trying to expand a little bit here. Or so you're going funny, not serious. Yeah, not serious at all. I don't. I don't quote serious movies. I only quote funny shit. I have. Oh my god! All right, I. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have a couple. Yeah. I'm going to have a couple, and uh, we'll talk about them and laugh and make fun of each other. Yeah. All right. The first one that popped in my head is all Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> if I had that anywhere on my body, everybody's yeah. going to be like, fuck yeah, dude. Awesome tattoo. <laughs> what was it? Oh, I lost a bet, and I had to get a tattoo of a movie quote on me. Yeah. Something like that. Just It'd be, it'd be a, a conversation piece, and every single person would get it. Not one person would question it. They'd be like, <laughs> they'd laugh. <laughs> and this one, this next one, it's a horrible thing to get put on your body. And I don't know why it popped in my head. It was just a movie quote. Like, I don't know why, like a famous movie quote. I'd put life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Forrest Gump. <laughs> it's a great movie. Forrest Gump is my favorite movie of all time. Really? Oh, fuck yeah. Nice. Forrest I mean, Gump. Right, rightfully so. Forrest Gump is my shit. Yeah. I just think it's the best feel good. I felt like Tom Hanks was actually Forrest Gump. I, I like it didn't feel like that's Tom Hanks playing a character. It felt yeah. like that was a real person. Yeah. That is that to me is what defines an actor is whenever I feel like that person is it. It's like Shawshank, Shawshank Redemption. Yep. Same thing. Like it's hard to it's hard for Morgan Freeman to be anybody other than Morgan Freeman, but he pulled off being red. Yep. And the same goes for Tim Robbins. Great movie. I love. Do you know that Shawshank Redemption did not win one Academy Award? Really? They never won one. Do you know why? No. Because. Forrest Gump was released the same year as Shawshank Get Redemption. out. Yep. I would have never guessed Nominated that. Nominated in every single fucking category the same. Forrest Gump clean sweep took Shawshank. Man. How a, fucking crazy is that? A year apart, they would have swept. Year year apart, Shawshank would have been the best movie ever. Yep. Man. Yep. Tough competition. Yeah. So, again, big. I love movies. Yeah. All right. So, what, what are you doing I'm there? going. I'm going, excuse me, Flo. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the soup du jour it's the soup, soup of the, the day, day. Mm. or just mm. I'll, I'll have, have that, that. <laughs> it's awesome fucking great why are you going to the airport <laughs> flying somewhere like literally I, I'd, I'd choose any 10 or 12 of my favorite ones from that movie 
That's an IOU. <laughs> That's as good as money. <laughs> uh, Three hundred fifty thousand. I want to hang on to that one. Bro, awesome. Okay, good call. So again, read good the question. Quest- good question. Yeah, read the question again for everybody, Shane. Ask your ask everybody this question in the in the office, on the job sites. It was uh, if you had to get one movie quote tattooed on your body, what would it be? Yeah, good one. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, all right. Next, next one is pull the internet. Uh oh, this is the fucked up one. <clears throat> yep. Would you rather fuck a chick who's banged a thousand dudes? Or a chick who's banged one animal. <laughs> oh. Who even thinks up these questions? Yeah, how does this not get screened out of there for bestiality? Is this one guy? <laughs> this, is, this dude's a fucking mess. A thousand dudes is a lot. That's oh, a, fuck, dude. That's oh, like. That's a lot. From a <laughs> hot dog down a hallway. Oh man! Oh damn it! I don't. Uh, I was gonna say something. Well, say it, dude. This is fucked up, dude. These are like these what are, kind of animal? Yeah, what kind of animal? Use like, your imagination. Is this pole? Uh, yeah. So we get an answer after this. Yep. Oh um, man! All right, dude. I'm gonna have a hard time fucking a chick that had that's been with a thousand dudes. That's like being with Darcel. But the opposite. Like a dude with a bunch of checks. He's got like 700 notches on his belt. It's disturbing. You know they weren't all tens. A couple of grenades in there. Grenades. There's like, there's, there's twos and unclean. Yep. I'm not going with a thousand dudes. Um, yeah, yeah. Is it? I, I think I'm taking, I'm taking the one with the dog or whatever. I don't know. I just, I got to give an answer, and just for lack of, I mean, I'm, I got to be better than a fucking dog, right? Well, yeah, the animal might be an accident. There's no way you accidentally fuck a thousand dudes, so. <laughs> Was it a bukkake? <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm not into that. I no. can't do it. Get me out of there. I want my dick to be the star of the show. <laughs> I'm taking the animal. Yep. Uh, 73% of Barstool readers chose A. A thousand dudes. <sighs> They'd choose that woman. They'd choose yep. the woman with a thousand dudes. Yep. Bro, a thousand dicks were in there. That's almost, I mean, that's almost a quarter of the people. Quarter of the people chose B. 70, 70, 73%? 73%, yeah. yeah. All right. I guess we're on the we're on the low side, this one. Yeah, whatever. Oh, at least we agree with each other. Take we your don't diseases see, and get out of here. I can't wait to get the fucking messages from all the people asking the same question there. And they're like, you sick fucks. Fuck. I know. Damn it. Now we're in that lower percentage. I know. Now we're going to get messed with Shane. Right. What are you doing? Are you fucking the thousand dudes? or the, I'm the probably animal? going the thousand dudes, yep. He's, oh, fuck. What are we doing? Are we, are we fucked up? I mean, I, animals don't carry these nasty diseases that a thousand. Not like Darcel does. Fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, He's going to be so mad. Next one. Next. All right. Just the third one. <laughs> yep. Here we go. If that one was that fucked up, I don't know if I want to he's, hear this he, one. He's been he's been uh, m- keeping the most fucked up one for the last. I one, know. So I'm a little yeah, nervous. This is pretty fucked. Oh, oh. Jesus! <clears throat> Answer the internet. If your mom and your girlfriend or fiance or wife switch bodies, and the only way to get them back to normal was to bang one of them, which one do you fuck? Oh my fucking god. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. What are the options? Uh, you're either <laughs> fucking your mom and Kim's body, or you're fucking Kim in your mom's body. Uh. Dude, you, you son of a bitch. This is... Oh, oh my God. I'm not, I don't even know. I don't want to answer this, this question. This isn't even funny. This is not funny. This is like hurting my feelings and my messing My belly with, hurts right this now. This is just messing with me. Now I'm going to fuck Hannah and think it's my mom or some shit. I'm going to create... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have this fucking... My palms are sweating. This yeah. is wrong. This is fucked up, dude. Yeah, my palms are sweating too. Chains like... That was fucked. Oh, is this was a poll of the internet thing? No, this is answer the internet. 
So there's no answer. There's no answer. She got to pick. I one got the heebie-jeebies. Okay. All right, let's run through this. Let's run through this out loud. Lo- logically. Logically, okay. And then I'm still not answering. This is fucked up. I'm just. Uh, I got it. God, I can't even say what so, I want to say. So here's the thing. You got to fuck your mom. Kim's in the body. Yep. Yep. You got to. I know. That's like. That's there's like, no way I there, would. There's a few rules I learned about having a threesome. Okay. Yeah. This is tips for everybody. Even though I've never had a threesome. It was like the dudes that did, they were like, whatever you do, if you have a threesome with another, with two chicks and one of them's your woman. I know the answer. You, yeah, you know the answer. Yep. You never get off from the other woman. No. You finish get off, in your you woman. You finish in your woman or on your woman. Yep. You got to. Yep. That's like breaking the rules. Yeah. Because your woman then like, oh, no, that's not fucking happening. Fuck her up. Yeah. Maybe that's, I don't even know. Maybe we could ask swingers. Maybe if we bring a swinger on, we could ask them that question. We could. Uh, but like, you can't go like... What do you mean? You mean you're going to go, oh, no fucking way, dude. Nope. You got to eat this one. Yep. You got to eat this one. You got to fuck. You got to fuck your wife and your mom's body. You have to, right? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not fucking. I I'm, can't say it. Yeah. You can't fuck your mom. If you're watching me. You can't you can't go fucking your mom and no, kids body. No, no way. That's no way. absolutely out. Not happening. You just, gotta close your eyes and just couple pumps. It. Couple pumps. Oh man, that's gonna be. What am I? What am I gonna do? No. Oh my god, Shane, I fucking hate you. I hate you more than I hated you at the beginning. What are you doing, Shane? Mom. Shane's huh? fucking I'm his mom. You guys. <laughs> Say it. Say oh, it. No, no way. <laughs> Say it. Nope. Say it. it. What are you going to do, Shane? <laughs> I'm on your side. Uh, <laughs> you say it or you're fired. You're fired. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just going to stop the podcast. <laughs> I'm going to leave I'll now. See you guys later. <laughs> He's like, uh, I got you that gift so I never have to answer these ones. I'm, I'm done. I'm oh, done man, with that question. This is just, that was uh, the worst thing I've ever been asked in my life. This is horrible. Yeah, the other ones were easy after I'd that I'd rather one. talk about strippers, cocaine, and hookers, and fucking and steroids all day. Fuck, I'd rather Vin Diesel be back in the equation Yeah, where's here. Vinny at? Bring him back Son in here. Bitch. Where's his pussy at? Yep. Him and his fucking 10-second cars. <laughs> Bring them back. Toretto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, is that terrible. I, we're going to have Mike choose them. And not Shane anymore and just give him to Shane. This is just disgusting. No, it's going to be way worse then. Oh, you're yeah. right. It'll be, be way worse. He'll, 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 like, he'll make his own. <laughs> <laughs> he'll make his own yeah, cards. Yeah, he would. Yeah. He'll make it super personal. Yeah, leave, <laughs> <laughs> leaving him and him and show up to anything is a yep. bad idea. Yep. <laughs> he'll write them on his own cards. Oh, yeah. He'll have them. He'll have Allie print them, make them look all cool. Yeah. Laminated, bring them in. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, man, is that a fucking riot. Oh, yeah. Okay, thanks, Shane. Really Fuck, ruined dude. my day there. Yeah, I was um, having a great day. I'm so excited for everybody at home to ask themselves this question. Everybody on job sites, all the guys are like, man, this was too far. Yeah. That was a step too far. Everybody. That yeah, might go, have been the worst go, one. Go ask the new guy. Go, go ask the go new ask, guy. Go, yeah. Be like, if you don't fucking answer this question, you got to say it. <laughs> you got to go buy us all lunch. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. All right, everybody. Um, I guess <laughs> I don't even know how to. Oh. Uh, thanks. I have such a weird feeling yeah, now. Thanks for listening to that, guys. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited because it is fun with these being so fucked up. Yeah. Everybody now has to answer them themselves because we put ourselves out there. Yeah. Listen, I, I take a, everything that I do very serious except myself. I love doing what I do so much and these questions being as fucked up as they are, I'm just, we're just putting ourselves out there and having fun. I think all of you know that. Please do the same with all your friends and family. Maybe not your pastor, priest, and mom with this one. Leave your mom out of this and don't tell your dad either. Um, <laughs> but have fun with it. We put ourselves out there. Put yourselves out there. Have a good time. Laugh. Enjoy life. And eat it all up. That's what this is all about. So again, we had the three questions. Ask the internet. Ask your coworkers, ask your friends. Don't ask your mom these ones. Leave them out. I like that shit. I like that shit. <laughs> Work really hard, everybody. Continue to be the best person you can be. Wake up with a smile. Make your cup of coffee the way you want to. Slap your woman on her ass. Let her know that you love her. Tell her you're going to get her good later. Send her a nasty, loving text throughout the day. And follow through with everything that you fucking want in life. Enjoy. Love life. And work your fucking balls off. Bye-bye now. Have a good weekend.